Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Gleason, and welcome back to the AT&T Big East pregame show. We'll get you back to Chestnut Hill for today's Big East game of the week in a few minutes. It's an extremely light schedule in the Big East this week. The only other game on tap today is Temple at Rutgers. The Owls are one of the most improved teams in the conference and need to win today to move within two games of becoming bowl eligible. Thursday night in Blacksburg, Virginia Tech's Andre Davis showed that he's one of the most explosive players in the nation when he scored three touchdowns within six minutes and six seconds of the third quarter. After trailing West Virginia 14-7 at halftime, the Hokies scored 41 unanswered second half points to shatter any Mountaineer upset bid. Second rank, Virginia Tech moves to 6-0. Coming up, Syracuse fresh off their double overtime win over Pittsburgh. Today, the Orange out to shut down William Green, who averaged more than 11 yards per carry last week in BC's win over Connecticut. We're ready for some football here at Boston College, Chestnut Hill, Mass. Dave Sims, Jeff Bostic, John Sanders with you. Important contest in the Big East this afternoon. Syracuse Orangemen and the Boston College Eagles. Boston College won the toss, and they have deferred. Jeff Bostic, a curious decision. That's an interesting decision on my part. If I'm Tom O'Brien, I want the football. I want my offensive line, my running attack, first on the field, and try and establish tempo. Will Allen having a great year as a kick returner in the Big East Conference. Ninth in the nation this year. Will's out of Syracuse, New York, Corcoran High School. His long on the season is 59 yards. Sandro Scortino has got us underway and a good kick. Woodcock. We'll let it bounce in the end zone. It'll be a touchback. Syracuse will have the ball at its own 20. Let's turn the third member of our broadcast team, John Sanders. David, thank you very much. It's only taken a year and a half, but at Syracuse, they finally have a replacement for Donovan McNabb. His name is Troy Noons. He is the co-Big East Offensive Player of the Week for leading his team to that overtime win against Pittsburgh last week. All he's done in his last two games is hit 75% of his passes, 500 yards, four touchdowns, no interceptions. Coaches say he does not have the ability to win a game by himself, but he won't lose it either, and that might be more important this afternoon. We'll see. All right, John, thank you very much. Noons third. In passing efficiency behind Jonathan Beasley of Kansas State and Jason Thomas of UNLV. First and 10 from the 20. Keep it on the ground and the veteran D. Brown. Nine yard pickup to the 29 yard line. So a good setup for Boston College. Against uh, Boston College by the Syracuse Orangemen. And they will look to run the ball a great deal this afternoon. D. Brown, you've seen him, a veteran. He's been here playing since a freshman out of Altamonte Springs. Top rusher on the ball club. Pat Woodcock has gone from just a possession receiver to their leading receiver. And when they need something, look for Syracuse to run left behind the outstanding P.J. Alexander and Sean O'Connor at the left guard. Second down play. They run the fullback, and he picks up a little yardage. That's Chris Davis. He's close to first down yardage. Chris, a sophomore out of Tampa, Florida. Take a look at B.C.'s defense. Sean Guthrie. Manning the front line, good pass rushers, got five tackles for losses, and that leads the ball club. Andy Romanowski, very important in the middle. They've had a lot of injuries in the linebacking core. And Ramon Johnson, the leading tackler, in fact, the top four tacklers on this ball club are all secondary people. Third and inches for Syracuse. Move the H back in motion, go to D. Brand. Guess what? He didn't make it. Boy, they went deep in the backfield to get him started. Good penetration by BC, Jeff. What a job of filling the hole by number 52, Andy Romanowski, taking on the block of Davis. Big defensive series for BC early in this football game. Watch. Hey, linebackers, this is how you fill a hole. Destroy the fullback. Tremendous job by Andy Romanowski right there. Fullback never get going. You know what? This is a clinic. This is what you do. You take this tape, take it home, and study it for young linebackers. Tremendous play, creating it on their side of the football. That was a great job as we look at Mike Schaefer, sophomore from Sarasota, Florida. He'll be punting. Penalty flag on the play. Low liner. DeWalt takes it at the 32, reverses field. And if they had breakaway jerseys, he would have been a much better shape. J.R. Johnson leading the Syracuse charge. 
but a flag back upfield. And this could be a huge penalty if it's offsides on Boston College. Sure would be because you take that emotional surge that you got in flushing. There's a break. It's against Syracuse. Break for Boston College. And we talked about it early. BC turning down possession after the uh, coin toss and trying to establish tempo. That is exactly what has happened with their defense. Paul Pasqualoni in his 10th year at Syracuse. Look at those numbers, folks. 70% winning percentage. A tremendous coach and a tremendous man. Only the great Ben Schwartzwalder. One more games at Syracuse. Then Paul Pasqualoni is looking at Tom O'Brien. Looking to get to the 500 mark today. If he can knock off Syracuse. And Tom told us that he really wants to get a rivalry going with Syracuse. Not only on the field, but in total, make it official. Play the game late in the year because they recruit from the same talent pool. Have a lot of players, Massachusetts players on the Syracuse Ball Club. Both mining that New Jersey area. First and ten. For Boston College out of the gun. Green trying to break something, and he does. He's in the second ten. It's a foot break. It's green. If he angles, he scores. He does not score. A saving tackle. Quentin Harris. If he had angled one way or the other, it was six. And it'll be first and goal for Boston College. Really shocked that anybody can run William Green down. If you're Tom O'Brien and the Boston College Eagles, this is exactly the way you wanted to start the game. Three and out on defense and a huge play on offense. Just the emotional kick that you were looking for for Boston College. And right now this defense of Syracuse, what happened? And you remember last year how this game started on a big uh, kickoff return by Dewan Daniels. Second 100 yards on the opening kickoff. And here's BC threatening already on the second play. Green again. Got blocking. Got to the edge. A great defensive play. Keon Walker, the strong safety out of Hoboken, New Jersey, comes up and ends it right there. You've got to like what Tom O'Brien and his coaching staff come up with the first play. Going out of the gun. One thing BC can do up front, they can get on you as an offensive line, big physical offensive line, touchdown saving tackle here. I did not think anybody could catch William Green. Boy, William Green's got to be real angry with himself. Second down and 11. Angles just a little bit, he scores. Well, I think William Green's of the opinion, nobody well, he, can catch me. Well, he learned differently, didn't he? <laughs> Here's a second down and 11. Hassel back to throw. Swings it outside. Green wide open. 10-5. Banged out of bounds at about the two-yard line. Another touchdown saving tackle. This time Willie Ford, the cornerback, comes up. And one time, you know, you, you always hear coaches say there's one game that's a breakout for you. Last week it happened for William Green at UConn. 19 carries, 225 yards, three touchdowns. And you know what? Filling in for Cedric Washington, the guy that was an all Big East performer. You know what? Getting the job done, this guy's going to be a star before he leaves Chestnut Hills. Third down, goal for Boston College. Play action pass. Take a pick, and he overthrows the fullback. Hey, he had a tight end down there. Robert he had Ellis. Camella as well, number 43. Robert Ellis, number 82, was wide open in the corner of the end zone. I'm really surprised by the play selection. Two throws when you're down there in the red area. Very unlike what Tom O'Brien told us yesterday. They wanted to establish the run and put the big offensive line. Good play fake. Look at the linebackers how drawn up they are. Number 82, Robert Ellis is wide open. Pettijohn gets a shot late. 19-yard field goal. And Mike Sutton's perfect year. Kicking field goals continues. He's a lucky seven for seven now. And Boston College, got to be a little disappointed they didn't get a six spot, but they do put it in the end zone. It's 3-0 B.C. Well, Paul Pasqualoni sort of dodged a bullet. 3-0 as B.C. tacks on a field goal. But uh, pretty stunning a turn of events with the big breakout run by Green on the first B.C. play. There's the man who stopped the tackle, uh, stopped the uh, touchdown with a great tackle and remember oh, last awesome. year's game a one-point game that play may be huge before the game is over scoring drive for BC five plays 72 yards just under buck and a half and Scortino is set to kick off again first one went well into the end zone and guess what so does this one I'll keep it right here nice job by Maurice Jackson 
Another touchback, and Syracuse will have the ball at their own 20. You talk about big plays in a football game. Number 29 for Syracuse, their safety. Quentin Harris with a touchdown saving tackle. What does that mean in a football game? It means four points. And you know what? Coaches will tell you during the course of a the game, there's five or six plays that will turn a game. That may be one of them. James. Their own 20 second series for the Archman. They had a third in inches and couldn't convert. Great play by Romanowski. Long count, Noons, they give it to Munger, cuts it back, finds a big running room, and it's a foot race again. Munger, will they catch him? 30, 25, got a block, he's down to the 11-yard line. First and 10 for Syracuse. What a run by James Munger. Last year, he had an 86-yard run in the Music City Bowl, the longest in Syracuse history in 50 years, and that one, covers 70 yards. And Syracuse is answering, saying anything you can do, we can do better. And one thing that happens if you're BC, Frank Spaziano, the defensive coordinator, eight in the box, once you break that first level of the uh, defense, there's nobody back there but the corners. Mungro's previous long this season was 61 yards. He's the lone setback, and I tell you what, that cutback play where you get everybody going in one direction and switch it, there was nobody home backside, Jeff. Same thing happened on the green play for Boston College. They show blitz, bring blitz. Here's Munro, a couple of yards, left side. He draws attention. Keith Levitt, Richard Freshman from Fitchburg, Massachusetts, makes the stop, number 64, for Boston College. So the, both, both coaches weren't kidding. We want to establish the run. They want to establish yeah. the run, but also William Green and James Munro are, are of disbelief of the fact that somebody could catch them. Look what Mungro has done the last three weeks. 38 carries, 326 yards, 8.6 yards a carry, and four touchdowns. Tremendous running back. And he's becoming a more complete running back. Year, two years ago, he didn't want to do the little things. And when you say the little things as a running back, picking up the blitz, blocking for your teammates. Dead ball. False start. Offense. Five yard penalty. Repeat the down. Time to Joseph, our referee today, and another mistake by the Orangemen, right when it looks like things are going to get good for him. When we talked about BC's offensive line. Syracuse much improved. You know, they lost a lot of guys. Banowitz, Corey Bowen to uh, graduation, having moved some guys around. You know what? Watch their left tackle. T.J. Alexander's got a chance to be special. Been pretty productive in the red zone. Syracuse Orangeman, second and goal. They're backed up to the 14 yard line. Noon to throw, quarterback draw. Got room, good runner, and takes it down inside the 10 to about the seven yard line. He's banged down there. Big hole there for Troy Noons. Tom O'Brien made one comment. Noons is at his best when he's doing his Roger Staubach impersonation. Believe me, I saw that one enough. This is what you're, you're seeing in the modern day quarterback, college and pros. The quarterbacks that are mobile, able to run, a la Mr. Vic, uh, Woody Dantzler from Clemson. How about uh, Dante Culpepper at Minnesota? Unbelievable. Sean Ryan on that last stop for Boston College. Here's Noons looking in the end zone. Got a man there. And Poorly thrown ball, trying to get it to David Tyree. Tyree caught the game winner last week in overtime against Pittsburgh. And Willie Poole, the cornerback, lucky he didn't get called for defensive holding. You're going to see Boston College cornerbacks matched up with a lot of man-to-man. -man. Frank Spaziano, he's going to try to stop that run with eight people in the box. That means man coverage. 24-yard attempt coming up for Mike Schaefer. And you talk about a guy looking to redeem himself. Mike was one for five last week against Pittsburgh. Missed one, the end of regulation, and in the first overtime. This is a chip shot, and he nails it. So both kickers off to good starts. Mike Schaefer, Mike Sutton. Couple of running backs, ditto. James Mungro, William Green, some big runs. we got a tie ball game here at Boston College, everybody. 3-3 here in the Big East. Back with more in a moment. Today's game is being brought to you by Buick, isn't it time for a real car? 1-800-CALL-ATT for collect calls. 
Polaris, leave your stress behind and take the time to get away. Polaris, the way out. Hotjobs.com. Hot jobs, onward, upward. Carday.com, certified used cars. Visit our website or call 1 800 My Car Day. And by Bass Ale, true to character since 1777. Dave Sims, Jeff Bostick, and John Sanders with you. Biggie's football from Boston College today. A 3-3 ball game early on with 9.02 to go. First quarter on a spectacular day for homecoming here at Boston College. And we've seen two big runs. A 63-yarder by William Green of BC. James Mungrow, a 70-yarder for Syracuse. Both setting up field goals and short ones at that. Pretty interesting. There's a plane carrying a banner. The coast is clear. <laughs> you know what? The coast isn't completely clear because we haven't seen the end zone yet. High short kick taken at the 15 straight up the middle and taken down at about the 28 yard line. Let's get an update. Go to our at t studio. Mike Gleason update on Northwestern and Purdue. Well, Dave, Purdue finally beat Michigan last weekend. Uh, Northwestern unimpressed. 76 yard drive capped off by Damian Anderson at 7 0 Wildcats. Drew Brees has just hit Vinnie Sutherland. They're now at 7 7, 10 26 to go in the first. Dave? All right, Mike, thank you very much. Maurice Minter with that kickoff return. Uh, with that tackle, rather, for Syracuse. 30 yard lines where BC is going to put it in play. They'll shift their two tight ends. They've got Guazzo 80 and Ellis 82. Single setback is Green. Hassel back to throw. Second time he's going to throw. The pressure puts it up for grabs and a catch to the 39 yard line. Heck of a play by Ryan Reed, the transfer from the Naval Academy. Boy, Heck. Hasselbeck, tough kid hanging in there. I started to say the easy part was catching the football. How about Tim Hasselbeck? Watch the bottom of your screen. Pettijohn nearly sacking him. Ryan Reed jumping up the ladder. And there's one thing that the Boston College staff and Tom O'Brien said. We haven't blocked Freeney, and we have not blocked uh, Pettijohn the last two years. Tremendous job of concentration by Hasselbeck. Nine-yard pickup, second down and one. Green gets the call, big hole. First down, Boston College. Boy, he had a lot of room to choose from. He was finally dragged down by J.R. Johnson, the linebacker from Cicero, New York. And let's get an update on some injuries with John Sanders. Missing from this offensive set for BC is number 48, Ryan Utzler, the fullback. His problem is a burner. He's going to be reevaluated during this half. May not play anymore here in the first half. They'll check him out at halftime with the hopes that he can come back in the second half. Gentlemen. Injury tolls just continue to mount, mainly on the defense, but now on the offense for Boston College. Green gets the carry again. Got to bounce it outside and nicely strung out again. J.R. Johnson, number 45, the outside linebacker on the stop. Good carry for Green. Lose a couple on that one. And there's one thing you can count on with the Syracuse defense. They have turned out some tremendous linebackers and trying to fill the void of a loss of a guy like Keith Bullock. You know, you don't replace that. Watch number 52, Morgan Greenwood. I'm convinced, folks, the middle linebacker, Clifton Smith, is going to be the best linebacker Syracuse has ever turned out. Remember that name. Remember the number. Number nine. He is a special. Just a sophomore from Freeport High School, Freeport, New York, on the island. Green looking for somewhere to go. And there isn't much room to run. J.R. Johnson once again. So J.R., number 45, his presence has been felt in this game already. And the one thing you don't like to see from a running back is dancing in the hole. Make a decision. What a tremendous block by number 50, LeCare. You know what? Get up in the hole, and if there's not a hole there, make one. JR gets a blow right now. Five carries, 75 yards for William Green. Third down and five. Hasselback slant, got his man. First down yardage. Jamal Burke out of Brockton, Mass. For Jamal, that's his 11th catch of the season. Hasselbeck having a good year, almost 59% on his completion rate. And it's interesting to see what the Boston College offensive line is trying to do to protect their quarterback. They're keeping the tight end to Pettijohn's side. 
We're going to see a lot of man-to-man -man coverage with both of these football teams. Seven, eight people in the box to try and stop the run. There are going to be some opportunities on the edge. Hasselbeck, three of four, 26 yards on the run. And it's our first look at Cedric Washington carrying the ball there, number two rusher on the ball club. And it's our first look at number nine, Clifton Smith. Freshman All-American by the uh, Sporting News first team. Started eight games as a true freshman. I tell you folks, when you're 255 pounds, you're six foot three and you run a four five, you know what, just show me a field. That's it. We can play in the parking lot. Well, he blew off the block of Paul LeCare, that's for sure. Good numbers and they continue to mount. Syracuse will rush four on the second down and eight. Hasselbeck going to run it. He ran effectively last year. And down he goes to the 32-yard line. Looks like he's close to a first down for Boston College here in this 3-3 ball game. Coming up on the five-minute mark here in the first quarter. Glad you're with us here for Big East football. Lovely Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. They do pick up the first down. Syracuse and BC. 32nd straight year they're meeting. Dave Sims, Jeff Bosick, and John Sanders with you. Our Big East crew. We welcome back our director, Bob Frateroli. It's over in Sydney. He even talks funny now, doesn't he? Hey. Good day, mate. On the 32. Washington. Now he makes a decision, Jeff, just like you've talked about. And that's the difference in an experienced running back. You know what? As an offensive lineman, you can't block these guys forever. You know what you're going to get in there if you see a, a crease, hit it up in there. You know what? Most of these guys, 200, 210 pounds. You see Cedric Washington's numbers. Tremendous year in 1999, almost 1,200 yards. Make a decision. And the one thing that uh, William Green will learn playing behind a guy like Washington is the decision process. Right. Make one and go. Well, here's the thing. I think, you know, Green may be looking to break a big play every play. And a great moment doesn't happen all the time. You know what? You're going to hit a lot more singles than you will home runs. Deep ball, corner, man there, broken up. Try to get it to Keith Hemmings. We talked about home runs, and that's exactly what the BC offense went for there. Tremendous pass by uh, Hasselbeck. You got to love this kid's composure in the pocket. And if you're able to run the ball and make the linebackers respect it, you're going to have these type of opportunities on play action. Ball hits him in the hand. You got to catch that ball. Sure Keith. enough. Out of Keysby, New Jersey, Woodbridge High School. You like it when your quarterback plays official also. He had a flag. He would have thrown it. Look at the number of people to line of scrimmage. Third down, five. Slant is there. Catch made by Hemmings. First down, Boston College. He beat Willie Ford. And that's the one thing you like if you're a receiver. You've dropped a touchdown pass. Come right back to him. Make a first down catch. That's you're going to see these little slants all afternoon. There's man-to-man -man coverage. If you break this tackle, it's a touchdown. You know what? Hemmings can do a better job getting off the ball. Use your hands to create separation. Hasselbeck's excited about the throw and catch. Four for six, 33 yards for Hasselbeck. First and 10, just inside the 20. Green is back. Green slashing hard inside the 15. Brought down from behind by J.R. Johnson. William Green brings a big package at 6'1", 216 out of Atlantic City. You know what? I get chills all up my spine when I watch this play. This is the old counter tray, folks. Flashbacks. Somehow number one looks like 44, and William Green looks like John Riggins. Good job of making a decision there. The one thing about the counter, it has to hit inside the tight end. Burke and DeWalt, one of the wideouts. Burke, bottom of your screen. Second down, five. Delay, great tackle. And a crowd drawn to William Green. But in the hole, Green got stood up. And you see them on pile. Like Eric Downing, number 90, got that first lick in there. And Kean Walker is also up at the line of scrimmage. They're intent on stopping the run. Watch the safety play right here. Kean Walker filling the hole. Eight people at the line of scrimmage. Man-to-man -man coverage. This is what Paul, uh, this is what Tom O'Brien was saying. We're going to have to be able to pass the ball to run the ball. Good stick by the strong safety. Third down five after that no gainer. Double wides left side. Coming hard. Ball flipped up in the air because Hasselbeck got drilled from behind by the leading sack man for Syracuse, Dwight Freeney, the junior from Bloomfield, Connecticut.
speed rush and a good looking one by Freeney. And you know what? Freeney is matched up against Robert Ellis, the tight end. If you're Tom O'Brien and your coaching staff, you cannot have their best rusher hooked up man to man all afternoon with your tight end. Put a big body on a big body. Pretty much a straight on kick for Mike Sutton. It already hit from 19, this from 31. And it's good. So Mike Sutton now eight for eight on the season, two for two for today. 31 yard field goal, BC 6 3 over Syracuse. Boston College 6 3. The veteran Marine Tom O'Brien. Tom entertaining us yesterday in his office. And I wonder if he's telling the officials that, you know what, this game's bigger for us than it is Syracuse. We're 0 2 <laughs> in the Big East. <laughs> they got to have it. That's all there is to it. You know, a lot of coaches won't even talk about the uh, prior, you know, games down the schedule. Tom made an interesting comment to us yesterday. The next four weeks are big for our football team. This one will be returned Woodcock from about the two. Woodcock take it to the 20 yard line. That out of Canada, Ontario, Canada. Kickoff return of 18 yards. 31 yard field goal by Sutvin is given. Boston College, a 6-3 lead, and the offense for Syracuse, not a lot happening. Noons is 0 for 1. You've got Noons running once for 8 yards, Brown 2 for 9, and Mungro 2 for 70. That's four plays, 87 yards. Not a real dynamic quality take away the Mungro run. This time from the 20 as they get things started. Coming up on two minutes to go, first quarter. D. Brown finds a lot of running room. And he gets it out to the 31 yard line. Let's get back to the sidelines and John Sanders. Dave, thank you very much. If you were with us three weeks ago, you're probably saying to yourself, now wasn't the BC bench on the other side of the field? Well, you're exactly right. But there's a rule in the Big East Conference, you can't put the visiting bench in front of your student section. So therefore they have moved from that side of the field, which is the east to the west side where they are this afternoon. Hard to keep track of them, but we'll follow them. I was wondering why I was a little bit dizzy coming in here. I thought something had been changed, John. Thank you. Boy, football has changed, hasn't it? <laughs> he got that right. First and 10 from the 31. Here's Brown again. Boy, he's getting a lot of running room here. He's into the secondary. Another first down. D. Brown at Syracuse. So give D. Brown four carries, 31 yards. And when we visited with the Boston College staff, Tom O'Brien said one thing. There were two players on our defense we could not lose. Antonio Gray. Scott Bradley. Guess what? They're both out of the lineup. Injuries have decimated this defense. You know what? This is a tremendous job of blocking up front. D. Brown's going eight or nine yards downfield before he gets touched. And notice it was over that left side. Alex sure O'Connor. Both teams looking to make its mark right now on the ground. And it's the first quarter. You bet. Again, D. Brown. Nice cut. Three straight runs for D. Brown. Three straight first downs for Syracuse. Boy, and again, now you see why BC's leading tacklers are folks in their secondary. And that's not a good sign, folks. Uh, you like to see your linebackers lead your team in tackles. Scott Bradley certainly is a huge loss out of there. Ryan Birch has been out for the last couple of weeks with a knee. You see this, and, and the one they really couldn't lose was Garay. He was a force inside. He's missed basically the entire season. He got hurt the first series against West Virginia. But they've really been decimated at the linebacker position. BC showing blitz. They back out. Noons, George DeLeon, the offensive coordinator, says young man is excellent in his checks. There's a throw. Woodcock on the slant. Nothing doing. Pretty good coverage in the secondary by Ralph Perret. Strong and the, safety. And the Syracuse offense may be fortunate they weren't flagged for illegal procedure. It looked like P.J. Alexander, their left tackle, left a little. You know what? He's either quicker than everybody else or he left early. How do you like yeah. that? <laughs> That's the <a> truth. <laughs> Noons still looking for his first complete completion. He's 0 for 2. The run game is what has made it happen so far for Syracuse. Long count, option, pitch back. Brown, got a lot of people on the ground. Sideline gets a block from Woodcock. And another first down for the Syracuse Orangemen. Let's get another update on Northwestern and Purdue, our AT&T studio, and Mike Lacey. Michael? 
Well, Sims, the Purdue will score on Northwestern, but can they stop the Wildcats? The 7 7 game, Kustak, the Teddy Johnson touchdown, Northwestern. That's their second. It's now 14 7, 3 10 to go in the first. And in Columbus, the Gophers have their sights on spoiling homecoming for the fifth ranked Buckeyes. It's 10 0 Minnesota over Ohio State. Let's go back to Dave and Jeff. All right, Mike, thank you. Bet there's Golden Gophers. Hey. Steve Brown, six carries, 58 yards, long count here by Nunes. Syracuse on an impressive drive. They'll keep it on the ground. Deep Brown this time. A better job on the run stoppage by Boston College. Saw Romanowski in there, number 52. And he had some help up front as well. Justin Hines there, number 95. Andy Romanowski, Jr., Lowell, Massachusetts. He's an All-American coming out of Lowell High School. It's all been, actually that graphic is reversing. All the, about the run, moves with time, moves with time again. That scrambling ability, throws it up for grabs, and it's picked off. Looked just like a play by a Syracuse alum. Donovan McNabb last week in the Philadelphia Washington game running to the same side of the field. He had room to throw it out of bounds, threw it up for grabs and got picked. George DeLeon, the offensive coordinator, mentioned one thing yesterday. Boston College is going to come at you from a lot of angles with zone blitzing. The one thing Tom O'Brien said, this is when uh, your quarterback, Noons, is at his best when he's scrambling around like Fran Targan and a Roger Stahlback. Look who makes the interception. Defensive end Sean Guthrie. You know, he caught it three times. The big sure thing is did. he held on to it. <laughs> you know, if you're Nunes, you've got to take this ball and throw it up into the stands. One thing he hasn't done the last two weeks is throw interceptions. He had been very efficient. Here's Hasselback. Home run ball. Got him in there. He overthrows him. I had Dedrick DeWalt flying. Will Allen was in the exhaust. Well, that's the type of ball, if you're Hasselback, you're in the huddle going, gosh, I'd like to throw that football again. Man-to-man -man coverage. I'm really surprised they're going after Will Allen. Tremendous cover corner. I would think they'd look on the other side of the field and, and maybe pick on Willie Ford. I like their shots downfield, though. That will loosen up the Syracuse defense. Ford got burned a couple of times, long passes in the loss at East Carolina in the rain a few weeks ago for Syracuse. Second down. Washington running room, open field, 35-40. They're gonna angle him out of bounds at the 39-yard line of Syracuse. First down for Boston College. Boy, the running room, the O-lines are just teeing off on these respective defenses. 39-yard run. First quarter done, and we've seen some outstanding running. Mark Colombo, reason to be excited, no question about it. 6-3 in a battle of field goals, BC in the lead, and the Eagles are threatening. Well, not a lot of points on the board, but I tell you what, both teams have done a heck of a job establishing the fact that they are going to run the football. Paul Pasqualoni has seen his team put up 137 yards rushing, but turnovers, how about that last turnover a pick by the defensive lineman, Sean Guthrie. And you see that the uh, Syracuse offense has only lost one fumble the entire year. That's tremendous. The one thing about it, six interceptions. That was not a good decision by uh, Troy Noons. And you see the great recipient, defensive end Sean Guthrie. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, it caught me by surprise. I saw a 90 back there. And there's Freeney. I can free. Turn loose ball. But BC's recovered. There is a break. There is a break for the Eagles. Mike Cook, the left tackle, recovered that fumble. And Freeney now has a sack in seven consecutive games. Freeney is simply too quick for the left tackle, number 65, Michael Cook. If you're Tom O'Brien, Dana Bible, the offensive coordinator, you know what? There's nothing fancy about this, folks. This is speed. Getting on the edge. Fortunate for BC, they're able to recover the fumble. One thing Michael Cook does there, he does recover the fumble. Seven straight with at least one sack. That's his eighth sack on the season. Really coming into his own. He had a Syracuse player with his hand on the ball. Didn't make the play. Hasselbeck, loose ball. There's a free hit, too. And I tell you what, that opportunity was not passed up by Willie Ford. 
He put a pop on Robert Ellis. Sometimes you'll have a quarterback that will expose your ribs. The, amen. On this instant, you know what? Robert Ellis exposes himself. Oh, baby. You're talking about catching your breath. But what would you expect in this game? Absolutely. That's what we've seen all along. And certainly that trend was established Thursday night, Big East football. And the guy like Kyle Caden, linebacker at West Virginia, big fella. Get him next year, babe. You're going to be on a lot of highlight reels. Here's Hasselbeck, deep sideline ball. Ford's got good coverage. Jim knocked down. Tried to get it to Keith Hemmings, and I tell you what, Willie Ford had that one smoked out. And this is the one thing that has hurt the Syracuse defense. They played very well at times. They've given up big plays in the East Carolina game, five plays going for 240 yards. You know, this is one of those deals trying to take a shot on third down. Would have been just as good as a punt. You bet. Kevin McMyler. Look at Quentin Harris. Malik Campbell. Standing at his own 10, awaiting this punt from McMyler, who averages just under 38 yards per kick. Campbell singles for a fair catch, ran into his own man, ran into his own man, ball at the 15 yard line. It's gonna be interesting here because Campbell got his hands on the ball, ran into his own man. Time to Joseph and crew sorting things out. 32 yards on the punt. Campbell running up trying to make the catch. Will Ford was there. No touch on the play by Syracuse. First touching, BC. First down, Syracuse. Real popular call here in Boston. <laughs> and if you you're Malik expect? Campbell, the punt returner, you have to do a better job of communicating with your teammates. Oftentimes your teammates can't see the football. I'm not sure that ball didn't hit the end of his fingers. Looked like he got a little left hand. And the one thing you got to do is get your teammates away from the football. Boy, that's awfully close. Sure is. Not real good field position for Syracuse, which the offense take away a couple of good running plays. Noons has not been productive so far. They'll keep it on the ground again. Nice job by Mungro to get it out to about the 21 yard line. Somebody lost that. Wow. Back. My goodness. What was that, Lenny Walls? No, sir. That was uh, Ramon Johnson. Ramon <laughs> loses the hat on that one. Let's take a look at the Buick first quarter stats here from Chestnut Hill, Mass. Look at that. All on the ground for Syracuse. Third down conversions. BC's done a better job. Third downs have been a problem for Syracuse all year long, only converting 31% of the time on third down. That generally is not going to help you. Here's Nunes. Still looking for his first pick. It's a touchdown. Walls, his third of the year. BC extends the lead. Lanny Walls, his third pick of the season. It's 12-3 Boston College. Well, Troy Nunes came in as the third most efficient quarterback in the country. And so far, a nightmare. 0 for 4, two interceptions. Tom O'Brien made one comment about Lenny Walls yesterday. He makes plays. Big body, six foot four. This is a simple case of a quarterback throwing a bad ball that stays in the air too long. Easy interception, easy touchdown. Almost like in a workout. Sutton, point after. Mark it up. 13.38 to go. Here in the second quarter, and a bad afternoon thus far for Troy Noons. Lanny Walls walks it home, 13-3 BC. Well, in athletics, it's all about how you bounce back from adversity, and certainly there have been some adverse situations here for Troy Noons, number 11, 0 for 4, two picks, the last one taken back for a touchdown, and Syracuse now trailing. 13-3 here at Boston College. And if you're Noons in the Syracuse offense, the one thing you can't afford to let happen now, you can't panic. You know, go back to what you do well. Run the ball. Averaging 5.6 yards a carry on first down. Go back to Mungro. Go back to D. Brown. Mungro with 76 yards. Brown with 59. High, short kick. 
from the 26 yard line. Will Ford, he's got some running room. Check that, that was Will Allen on the return. And it's a good thing he was nimble because that ball was hanging for a long time. And this is, is simply a bad ball by the quarterback throwing all the way across the field. A ball that stays in the air that long, there's only two things that are gonna happen to it. It's gonna be picked off or it's gonna be like one of those shotguns. Pull, That's right. <laughs> it's gonna be pigeons and Clay's being shot. You know what? Lenny Walls can make this catch with his eyes closed. This is a gift. Lenny Walls, Galileo High School in San Francisco, California. And Brother they, Kenny, pretty good basketball player here at DC. They've been pleasantly pleased with his play, believe me. Good field position for Syracuse. They're on 46. D. Brown hunting, pecking, and driving ahead. Boy, he did a number on Keith Levitt, the right tackle for BC. Just drove him back a few yards, number 64. And the one thing about the BC defense, when you look at Godwin and, and you look at Levitt, you're talking about freshmen. You're talking about redshirt freshmen, very young inside. Well, who do you lose last year? How about Chris Oban doing a very good job in Minnesota? You know what? He did a number on Randall McDaniel last Didn't he? Monday. on Monday night. And Frank Chamberlain, you're talking about a guy that had a career game last year. 25 tackles, including the game saver on the D. Williams on a fourth and 14. Stopped him a yard short. D. Brown slashing through. I'll tell you what, they get whatever they want running. I think we're going to see a steady diet of that as Ramon Johnson, the leading tackler for BC, comes up to make the stop. You see the youth that is uh, up front for the Boston College defense. You know, combined, we're only looking at 25 starts. Yeah, that's not good. When you look on the other side of the football, Moreland Greenwood for the Syracuse uh, Orangemen, 42 consecutive starts. It's all about experience. And this is a BC club that's 0-2 in the conference. That's why this 13-3 lead is so big. You want to build on it, see if they can get some stops. But Syracuse getting everything they want on the ground. Another nice piece of yardage by D. Brown, his 10th carry. Got 75 yards. And that offensive line's doing a good job. Sean Ryan made the stop for BC. And Syracuse has not had a problem on first down. About a five-yard gain, they're averaging 5.6. The big key, third down is the most important down in football. And I'm still convinced the most important player on a football field is your quarterback. Hot quarterback, good things happen. Right now you got a very cold quarterback in Troy Noons at 0 for 4, two interceptions. Second down, five. Noons, handoff, D. Brown. Good contact in there. Looks like it'd be about a yard short. Again, Ramon Johnson there. Steve Martin, number 55 as well. And Marco Williams, so those linebackers, Williams, 41. Ryan Birch, 96. Steve Martin, number 55 for BC. And there's nothing at all fancy about that football. Let's roll up your sleeves and you know it's a here we're coming. See if you can stop us. Hey, big boy, here's what we got for you. It's called a little smash mouth. Let's get into it. They sent Woodcock out. David Tyree will go to the top of your screen. They got an extra tight end and now penalty flag. And the Syracuse coaching staff is irate on the far side. And they're gonna get called for an illegal substitution. Okay. 12 people were in the huddle. David Walker putting his headphones on right now, running back. Coach, uh, terrific running back in his own right at Syracuse not too long ago. Dead ball, substitution infraction on the offense. Five yard penalty, we played it out. And when you're an offense that hasn't been converting third downs, you certainly like to see third and two as opposed to third and seven. You bet. And when your quarterback's 0 for 4, two picks. Yeah, it's kind of hard to cut that football loose when you've thrown two interceptions and you're 0 for 4 this afternoon. BC putting in its, it's like a nickel, a problem, no, more of a dime package on this third down. Play coming up, third down at seven. Play clock at seven. Yourself. Look at this. The play clock's at six, five. They're not going to get this one off. Three, two, one. And they call a timeout. They have to burn a timeout. Paul Pasqualoni's uh, expression on his face. Think along with him. And it's not good. Got a timeout on the field here at Boston College. The Eagles lead it 13-3 against Syracuse.
Well, Paul Pasqualani had some time to think about what he wants to do here on this third down and seven. And Dave, what I think happened on third and two, they weren't sure if they wanted to be in the heavy package with three tight ends, Woodcock coming in and out of the game. Costly penalty. I think they were in two down territory now. Now we'll have to see what happens on third. Well, they've got three wides and D. Brown the lone setback. Noons looking for his first completion. Throws, got it. Inside the 20 to David Tyree. Sophomore from Montclair, New Jersey. First down for Syracuse. First big passing play of the afternoon here at the 1027 mark. And you know what? The last pass that Troy Noons completed was last week to the same young man, David Tyree. What a big play it was. Tyree, that's his eighth catch on the season. The young man's got three touchdowns. Coach Pasqualoni, throw the ball more to him. I think he finds a, a way to get it in the end zone. Got the wide package in again. Brown, the only running back. Noons one for four, 21 yards. Bring the blitz. Steve Brown runs right by it. Into the secondary. Inside the 10. First and goal. Down near the seven yard line. They ran right by the blitzers. Ralph Parrott coming in from the strong safety spot. If you're Frank Spaziani, the defensive coordinator for Boston College, you had the perfect defense call. Your will linebacker, uh, Curtis Bolden, runs right into the hole where the running back is. Watch this. Watch the left side of your screen. Right there. Bolden has to make that tackle, but you know what? It's easy for me to say you have to make that tackle. I'm not tackling uh, D. Brown out there. The effervescent Frank Spaziani. News quarterback draw. No way to go. He's taken now by Keith Levitt. News tried to make something happen there. Levitt not buying. And it looked like this was a called play. The quarterback draw. Noons takes a three-step drop. Yep, he's looking to run. But you know what? Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Too many uh, burgundy jerseys. That's it. Martha Mavendel is about 1964. Spaziani right there. You see the defensive coordinator. He made one comment to us yesterday, Dave, that I thought was interesting. Talking about his defense, he said, if you think, you stink. React. Great quote. Great sense of humor. Frank Spaziani. Be with us next week here on the Big East Football Network as we roll along from ESPN Plus. Most of us will see, most of you are going to see, Miami Hurricanes are coming up that big win last week against Florida State. Told us that uh, Butch Davis' program's all the way back. We're going to Philly take on Temple. The Owls no longer a pushover in the Big East either. Miami at Temple, or some of you will see the BC Eagles take on the Pittsburgh Panthers. And how big a win was it for the Miami Hurricanes to knock off Florida State? Still an amazement. As great a program as Bobby Bowden has at Florida State, it's a sometimey thing that he has a good kicker. Because right now, ain't one of them times. Well, he just had one for the last three or four years in Janikowski that was as good as anybody. You bet. But just a sometimey thing. By the way, Deep Brown, a couple of carries ago, moved past the great Jim Brown into 11th place on the career rushing list at Syracuse. And here's a look at the ESPN USA Today. Top 25, first time in history. Big East with two teams. Top six. And they said we could only play basketball, right? <laughs> Chris Davis, Dee Brown, they are your running backs out of the I formation. A couple of tight ends. Woodcock, the only wide out option. News left side. Nice job. And then draws a crowd. Down he goes. Good job in there. For Boston College, Lenny Walls. You've seen him before. Long afternoon so far for Mr. Noons. And Syracuse has not been real productive on third down. And this is what you have to do to the option. You have to string it out, force it to the sideline, and make your quarterback make a decision with the football. Well, right, here's an unusual. Look, they got the tight end wide right. And they've got five wides here. Noons, empty backfield. He'll have to throw it quickly. Looking. Woodcock is wide open. 
Pat Good Wood Brown. back is wide open in the end zone. Noons, end zone, corner, no. Tried to get it to his tight end, Graham Manley. Number 16, Pat Woodcock, is absolutely wide open in the middle of the end zone for Syracuse. So Noons could not find him. Five guys to choose from, pretty well covered by Boston College. I bet you when they get to the sideline, Noons may not have been able to find Woodcock, but he'll find Noons, believe me. He was wide open in the end zone. 27-yard attempt here by Mike Schaefer. Schaefer was good earlier from 24 yards. High snap put down, and the kick is good. Good hands by Noons on that hold. So a 27-yard field goal makes it 13 for Boston College and six for Syracuse. Back with more in a moment. Caption this piece of video, you'd have to say, not the gentleman in the blue shirt, but the guy on the phone, slow burn. And we're going to show you why. Pat Woodcock had an opportunity to get six, but his quarterback never saw him. I wonder who he's talking to on the telephone. <laughs> you know, I, I would be finding my quarterback and saying, you know what? I wasn't partially open. I, I wasn't even marginally open. I was wide open. <laughs> Could have put a stamp on it. Here's a kick. Ben Kozik, short. It's taken at the two-yard line by Dewan Daniels, and he gets it back to the 16-yard line. And we're telling you about Woodcock. Just think back to one of the Super Bowls. It was Jimmy Orr Super Bowl three? Look at this. Look at the middle of the field right there. Number 16 sitting right over the G. G is for go to me, okay? Woodcock, number 16 with his arms up. You know, everybody's seen all the Rocky sequels, you know? Yo, Adrian, I am here. <laughs> huh? Wide open. Man. <laughs> you fans at Baltimore, remember that? Earl Morrow had Jimmy Orr wide open and never went there. Here's Green, hit by the middle linebacker, but a good job by Green to get out of the grasp of Clifton Smith. Second and six at the 20. 13-6 ball game at Syracuse. Yeah, it's pretty safe to say they've been struggling on the road, eh? And to go back to the movie comparisons, what did Dorothy say at the end of The Wizard of Oz? There's no place like home, right? And obviously that, that score being outscored 177 to 61 is a little bit out of kelter when, you know, last year against Virginia Tech, they got 62 nothing uh, pasted on them. Brian St. Pierre making his obligatory second quarter appearance here is uh, Paul Pasqualani. After all the things that have happened here, he's only down a touchdown. You know he's counting his blessings. And they have to feel very good what they're doing offensively. Uh, Noon's decision process will get better. Hopefully his vision will also. But they're doing the good things. They're able to block BC. They're able to run the football. Conversely, BC able to run the, run the football. Got a man uncovered. Got a man uncovered up top. They roll away from him. Blitz. Throw underneath. And that's only a short gain. And it's going to be a shy of the first down. As they get it to number 11, Dedrick DeWalt. They had William Green flank top of your screen. And they rolled away from him, and he was uncovered. And this is a bad pattern that's ran by DeWalt. You know what, if you're a, a, a receiver that's been in big games like this, you have to know where the yardage markers are. Believe me, the BC staff, Dana Bible, the offensive coordinator, they're not designing, you know, routes that don't get you first downs. Here's McMyler. Oh, he gets into this one nicely. Malik Campbell's got running room. Return's going to be to the right. He's got the wall set up. He cuts it back the other way and cut right into trouble. And boy, I tell you what, he's got seven guys waiting for him to his right, and they are not happy. He had guys shaking their heads. What are you doing? A one-yard return. When we come back, 13-6. Boston College leading Syracuse. Well, if you send out a search party for a beautiful day, guess what? You win. Gorgeous here in the Boston area today. 
Six oh one to go second quarter homecoming about a week away or so maybe a week 10 days away from the leaves really turning. But we're not going to talk about Logan Airport. <laughs> well, you know what? We wouldn't be telling folks something they didn't already know. Folks Man, who live up here. People that have to travel in and out of Boston's area and go through Logan Airport. I feel for you. <laughs> we got stuck in it yesterday. That was their welcoming party. Noons one for six, 21 yards, two picks. Second one was taken home for touchdown. That's the margin right here. They run straight up the middle with Mungro picks up about three, four yards. Boy, Nick Romeo, the center, did he finish off his block? He drove his man in a circle and then buried him. And this guy has a chance. How are you able to move P.J. Alexander to left tackle? Well, what normally happens, a player steps up. Nick yeah. Romeo, redshirt freshman, is going to be a good one here. His favorite team, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. His favorite player, Warren Sapp. If you're a center, believe me, Warren Sapp is not your favorite player if you've ever blocked him. <laughs> yeah, you've had you've had your beer share runs, and here's Noon's got a first down. And that's his most productive play so far today, with the exception of handing off the Mungro and Brown. Next week, some of you get another look at the Boston College Eagles on this Big East Network. The Eagles take their offensive firepower to Three Rivers Stadium, hook up with another team that can put points on the board, the Pittsburgh Panthers and their dynamic duo of receivers, T. Prim and Antonio Bryant. BC Pittsburgh, and some of you will see that game while Jeff and I will be in Philadelphia. See the sixth ranked Miami Hurricanes take on the improving Temple Owl. Big East action from ESPN Plus. Next week, check your local listings. Noons rushing four carries, 19 yards. Mungro, penalty flag as well as Mungro takes it into BC territory to about the 48 yard line. The left guard, number 76, Sean O'Connor, uh, he was either dancing with Doug Goodwin or he was holding him. One, one or the other were true. This is going to be a holding penalty. We're going to move him back. This official will not tell you the guilty party, but trust me, it's 76. You having been there on several occasions. What do they say? Been there, done. No, that's right. <laughs> Holding on the offense. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. We played it down. And that's one rule I do not like about college football. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. What if it happens past the line of scrimmage? You bet. Why don't you bring it back to the line of scrimmage and, and watch the left guard? 76. This is what we call a down block. Okay, he's got his right arm on his on his. You can't see it from this angle. Trust me. When Goodwin number 61 turns around, it's not turning around because he wants to dance with right. Sean O'Connor. What's it like when you have your, num your number announced to 80,000 people in a worldwide audience? Hold on, number 53. How about if you're on a national game like a Super Bowl and there's like 200, That's what I'm saying. 200 million people? <laughs> there's Mungro outside running room again. Boy, Mungro has had a lot of chance to run, and he's made the most of his opportunity. Tell you what, at the rate they're going, Syracuse were to, they're able to pull this game out. They may want to give a, a game ball to the O line. Not to take anything away from Mungo and Brown, but the O line has done a great job today. As a running back, when you're able to get not only to the line of scrimmage, but five or six yards downfield, look at the, you know, that's a zone block. PJ Alexander on the left side along with O'Connor. Watch your left tackle. When your running backs can get seven or eight, nine yards downfield without getting touched, the guys up front are doing their job. You bet. Mungra also made uh, Willie Poole leave some uh, linen and lingerie in the secondary. Bill Raftery, my partner in many college basketball games, linen and lingerie. Great move. Syracuse bringing in what we would call their heavy package. They're bringing in an additional tight end, number 41, Aaron Lewis. This would be a great opportunity to take a shot on play action and go deep. I like that call. Mungro, not even at halftime, he's almost to the century mark. 16 yards per carry, third and short. Tight end in motion is Lewis. Good call, Jeff, play action. Throw it short, they don't go deep, but they go to Manley, the tight end, rumbling down to the 30-yard line, a first down for Syracuse. Let me put a little Jeff Bosick OC in there, offensive coordinator. And the one thing about it, they had two tight ends running in the same area. 
Manley is acting as if he's a blocker. You see Manley, number 89, making the catch. Frazier, number 88, in the same area. You know, normally when receivers are running together like that, somebody's wrong. And hit Lewis in there as well. He had three guys, three tight ends in the same zip code. First and 10 from the 30. Noons, option, reverses. He might make something happen here, folks. Good claw off, oh, great play. Great play by Willie Poole. Totally shut it down. Noons had a lot of room, and Willie reacted quickly and got over and said, enough of this. Gain of maybe a yard. That looked like it could have been broken for six. This is the most exciting six-yard run I've watched in a long time. Troy Noons is really adding the flavor to running the option. Uh-oh, I can't go that way. I think I see something to the right side. Tremendous job of open field tackling by number 13, Willie Poole. I'll tell you what. A guy named Vic was here a few weeks ago. Yeah, but you know what? Willie Poole does not tackle Vic. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Not many people tackle Michael Vic. Say that again. Second and long blitz. Noons in trouble. Down he goes. Loose ball. They're going to call it a fumble. They're going to say it's down right there. And a blitz worked. George DeLeon, the offensive coordinator for Syracuse, said yesterday, these guys come with, with so many blitzes, so many different angles. Paul Cook, number 27, basically unblocked. Couldn't account for him. And you know what? And Noons is smart enough. You see, he's, he's only a sophomore, but he sees those big guys coming around him. Let's get on the ground and we'll That's live it. for another play. Amen. Solid thought. Timeout caught by Boston College with 2.12 to go here in the second quarter. Paul Cook out of Berea, Ohio, coming off a strong spring, one of the team captains. And Noons gasping for air here, talking to his quarterback, Coach Jim Hoffer. And let's go down to, to the sideline. Special guest standing by with John Sanders. Well, we're going to be talking about Kyle Johnson. He made a name for himself on the football field for Syracuse, but off the football field as well. His acting career has been in full swing. However, this year he's acting like a football player, not on the stage right now because he got hurt. We are joined right now by Kyle Johnson. And Kyle, you got hurt in the very first game, a severe ankle injury, and uh, I know it's been tough for you to stand here and watch week after week. It's a little difficult, but at the same point, um, if Syracuse goes out and plays well, then I, f I can feel a lot better. What about the acting career now? That's obviously the, the ankle problem's got to limit the parts you can play. <laughs> I mean, well, it limits me now, but at the same point, I will be concentrating on football, you know, if everything was going good. And so, you know, you know, you take a little time out during the season to concentrate on, you know, your number one priority, I guess, at this time. It does not look like you're going to get to come back this year, does it? Right, not likely right now, but, you know, you can hope for the best and just see what happens in the future. All right, thanks a lot, Kyle. Thank you. Back to you guys. Kyle Johnson, one of the co-captains, poised young man. You could see that he would have uh, maybe some future on the board. You never know. He's out of Woodbridge, New Jersey. George DeLeon said he's a, the fullback, silent centerpiece opposite the quarterback to this offense. Real important loss for the Orangemen. Tell you what, Syracuse has done a heck of a job dancing between the 20-yard lines, Jeff. But their one Achilles Hill is third down, and particularly when it's third and 13. Uh, I don't know of any offensive coordinator, quarterback, wide receiver that likes third and 13. And it's the day after, Friday the 13th. Woodcock's in motion. See if he can get open like he did the last time they had the ball. Noons, fake screen, screen right. It's there. Mungro, couple of blocks, open room, stumbled, breaks a tackle, and there he is inside the 15 to the 13-yard line. That play worked. First and 10. For Syracuse. And you like to have the, the way the formation plays itself out. Woodcock going in motion, dragging a safety with him. Your offensive line doing a tremendous job of being an actor. You know what? It's not a fair battle when you got those two big guys out front blocking safeties. And Mungro, the one thing you like about this guy, he gets hit, he, he stumbles, he's like a weeble. He'll wobble, but he won't fall down. Picked up 21 on that play. Woodcock and Malik Campbell, the bottom of your screen. Just this quarter, a butt 21. Noons to D. Brown. Oh, good hit. Boy, he stood up, he stopped his own momentum and wound up getting lit up by Tom Martin. Boy, you stand there, make yourself a target. Guess what? 
An unload job by Mr. Mart. That little pigskin is kind of like an X. <laughs> you know what? It's on your jersey. Find it. <laughs> Coming up, the National Car Rental Halftime Report. Take a look at the top 25, the Big East Wire, and highlights and stats. Mike Leeson will have it for you from our studios. I'll tell you a little secret. Ohio State's getting upset right now. And I'm sure they're not too happy about it. Second down play. Just outside the 10 yard line at the 11. Option. Noon keeps it. Maybe a yard. Again, Tom Martin, number 90, on the tackle for BC. Good look at Tommy out of Farmingdale, New Jersey, with the Howell High School. And you keep talking about one thing that's that's consistent: redshirt freshman, very young defensive line. And you know what? They're going to get better as the season goes on, and obviously with another year of maturity. The one thing BC will have to do next year. They're going to have to replace almost their entire offensive line. Four seniors will leave. You see the timeout situation. We've got a, about 47 seconds to go in the game. Tommy, two-time All-Stater in New Jersey. And uh, for all the latest news and stats from around the conference, check out the Big East website. There's information on every Big East football team, plus all the other sports. You log on to www.bigeast.org. Noons has completed his last two passes for 35 yards. Love to get one here in the end zone. Schaefer with a couple of field goals. He only scores for the Orange today. 24 yarder in the first quarter. 27 yarder in the second quarter. Sutton two field goals for BC. 19 and 31 in the first quarter. Lenny Walls with a pick. 29 yards takes it to the house for the only touchdown in this game. You're talking about a big day for number 23, James Mungro. Huge run on their second possession and continues to make the big plays this afternoon. You know what, you may not like to score on the board right now if you're a Syracuse fan at 13 to six, but you have to like what your offense has been able to create up front. Woodcock in motion on this third down play of Biggie. Sprint out, left side, Noons. Will he take it down? No, stop, throw, pick up! Not a good decision. Boston College takes over the third INT for Troy Noons. Boy, you talk about something that collapses. He had an opportunity to tie the game with a touch and extra point, or maybe even take the lead with a touchdown and a two pointer. Noons, just a horrible turnover. Three for nine and three interceptions. What a horrible decision. You know, he's rolling to his left. It looked like he could take and put the ball under his arm and get this thing in the end zone. You know, Christmas is not until December. This is a served up gift. Number 24. Ralph Parent. Parent. You know what? He, he's got to be as in disbelief as uh, George DeLeon, the offensive coordinator. Put the ball under your arm and make it happen. This is just a horrendous decision. And There's nobody any remotely close to him. There was no chance he would have had to put a ton of a whole bunch of air to get it to Woodcock that time and he knows it. But you know what you've seen quarterbacks have halves like this. I played with a few of them. Joe Theismann probably had the greatest game I remember him playing against the New York Giants. He got his front teeth knocked out in the first half had three interceptions. Guess what he did in the second half came back and had three touchdowns and we won't win the football game. You're going to learn about number 11 in the second half. The BC going to let the clock run out. And news we talked about earlier, adversity, going to have to shake it off. Easier said than done, Jim. Hope we're trying to pump him up because they will need him because this game is hardly out of hand. It's only 13 to 6. Paul Pascaloni. Probably pretty emotional right now. Let's go down and see what Tom O'Brien is thinking. Here's John Sanders. What are you thinking, Coach, after the first half? You knew it was going to be tight. You've run the ball very well so far. What are your thoughts overall on the first half? No, I think it's been pretty ugly. I mean, we've missed a lot of tackles. We, we've made a lot of plays on defense, so we missed a lot. we got to stop them on third down so we can get the ball back. I don't think we have many plays there in the second quarter. we got to get the offense the ball so we can do something offensively. Are you going to make any changes going into the second half? Yeah, we're going to try to tackle better. That's the first thing we're going to do. If we tackle better, then we'll be we'll be better. All right, Coach, thank, thank you very you. much. David, back upstairs. John, thank you very much. Tom, is always, right to the point. You know what? You, you, you get name, serial number, and rank, right? There we go. We will take a break. It's halftime here at Boston College. Troy Noon, a nightmare first half. 
Easy pickings here for BC. Eagles lead it by a touchdown. Very important Big East game here. The Eagles lead the Orangemen 13 to six here at Chestnut Hill. Dave Simpson, Jeff Bostic with you. And Jeff, I gotta tell you, between the 20s, this has been an unbelievable game. I mean, they're killing each other, but only 19 points on the board. We talked about it in the open, being able to run the football. Both teams have done that, done it very well. Typically when you run the ball as well as Syracuse and BC have done this afternoon, you <laughs> score a lot of touchdowns. That has simply not been the case. Not 13 to six point. You know, interesting second half. And there's one thing about big games like this, Dave. Somebody's gonna stand up and be a star. Well, let's take a look at some of the first half highlights, as we told you. Between the 20s, and a heck of a ball game. William Green, first play for BC. Looks like he's going to take it to the house. And a touchdown saving tackle right there. Well, we're watching the tennis match. James Munger, number 23, with a huge first half, you know, answers back. But the big problem for the Syracuse offense, you talk about the rushing attack, it's been the decisions of their quarterback. You know, this is a gift touchdown right here. Lenny Walls, number nine, with a touchdown putting up the uh, BC 13-3, and just before the half, probably the worst decision of the game for news. Put the ball under your arm, try and get in there, and you know what? Coach Pasqualoni not happy with that decision. I wouldn't want to be in the Syracuse locker room right now. Not at all. We'll take a look at some of the stats uh, put up by these young men here in the first half. Rushing yards. Look at Syracuse, 208. That should be good for a game, but the three turnovers tell the story. And you know, we saw it just before the end of the half. Tom O'Brien not happy with his defense. And the one thing about it, it's a hand-in-hand -hand game. If your defense can't get Syracuse off the field, your offense can't get on the field. Boston College's offense, very little in the uh, second quarter. The big thing if you're Syracuse, you have to like your third down conversions. And the one thing you have to think without any question, Troy Noons cannot play as bad in the second half as he did in the first. Or they'll be looking for the uh, phone to call down to the bullpen. Campbell looking to maybe make a big impact on this game when we come back. Second half kickoff, seconds away. College over Syracuse. Let's get down to the sidelines and John Sanders. Coach, your assessment of the first half of this afternoon's game? Well, first of all, we've had some scoring opportunities that we've got to take advantage of. Uh, we didn't score touchdowns. We were able to get a couple field goals, but we missed a couple other scores. That's number one. Number two, we've got to do a better job on defense against their two tight end offense. We've got to be able to get them into third down. They've gained a few too many yards uh, pounding the ball with the two tight ends. Good luck for the second thank half. Thank you. Back upstairs, guys. All right. Thank you, John, and thank you, Paul. We're ready for second half action here. Ben Kozik's got it teed up, the junior from Adams, Massachusetts. Ben 6'1", 186, and the opposition is averaging 15 yards a kick return against Syracuse. You often hear coaches talk about the first five minutes of each half, mm -hmm. particularly important for Boston College. I think their offense was off the field so much in the second quarter, they need to reestablish, you know, some type of dominance up front. High short kick, taking it about the 14-yard line. J.P. Camello, the backup fullback, takes it up to about the 28-yard line. Tackle on the play by Will Allen. So Will Allen, one of those do-it-all guys, plays on defense and also on the special teams. We talked about the amount of yards gained quarter by quarter. Boston College, 168 the first quarter, only two in the second. The one thing you like if you're Syracuse, you have balance throughout the first half. And you have an advantage on time of possession. That will be key. Out of the eye formation, Green gets the carry. And almost broke it. Almost broke it. As they get a saving tackle there. Looked like Will Allen. Check that. I think that was number. That was Will Allen that came up to make that stop. And you could hear a collective hush over yeah. the stadium, realizing that uh, William Green was only about an arm tackle away from breaking that thing 70 yards. Hasselbeck, just four of ten in the first half. Keep it on the ground with Green. Get to the corner. He's got the first down and another saving tackle. There's Ford. He was in there on the stop. Green, 11 carries for 103. Good day's work with the uh, second half still to go. And a good job by his fullback on a lead block on uh, Greenwood. You like what you see 
and green. The only thing I would tell him if I were his coach, make a decision, William, and go with it. Second guesses himself sometimes. Watch out. Step throw and through the arms of the intended receiver, Jamal Burke. And once again, the tight end number 82, Robert Ellis matched up man to man against Dwight Freeney. You wonder why I say watch out. That's the blind side of Tim Hasselbeck. I'm really shocked. If you're gonna keep your tight end over there, make your tight end release outside, force Freeney back into your tackle. Young man was a force cause to fumble in the first half. Fortunate for BC, they were able to recover it. Second down play coming up. Second down and 10. Little counter tray action. Caught from behind. Mr. Free ran that play down from his opposite end. There's a lot of things you can coach in football. Speed is not one of them. And that's really a trademark of Syracuse defense throughout the uh, Paul Pasqualoni era. Being able to run and get to the ball. And that's one thing that really concerned BC coming into this game. Tom O'Brien said, we have not blocked Freeney, and we certainly have not blocked Pettijohn. Let me say something. We haven't called Pettijohn's name all afternoon. That's right. Colombo. Haven't, called, haven't Mark, called a lot of Greenwood either. Mark Colombo, the right tackle, is doing a good job on him. Out of the gun. Ryan Reed, top of your screen. Dwan Daniels in motion. Hasselbeck, step, throw. And not even close to Dwan Daniels. That's the first time I think I've seen Tim Hasselbeck pop, possibly hear steps. Moreland Greenwood was about to unload on him, and it looked like Hasselbeck somewhat short-armed that football. Daniels was open. Sure was. Running free. They cleared that zone out pretty well. Myler's on for the punt. Pretty good rush. Oh, he gets a beauty. Got all of it. Malik Campbell, 15-yard line. Boy, passes up the wall again. He had help from Ford to his right. Second time, Campbell has passed up the opportunity on a set return right, seven-yard return. Syracuse ball when we get back. iCarDay.com, certified used cars. Visit our website or call 1-800-MY-CAR-DAY. Dave Sims, Jeff Bostick, John Sanders and the biggest crew here in Boston, 13-6. D.C. leading Syracuse and slash up the middle for about four yards. Check that three yards on the carry is Mungro. Check that D. Brown and it's straight up the middle. D. Brown as the Orangemen take over after the punt. Both quarterbacks today completing 33 percent of their passes. Noons came in as the third most efficient quarterback in the country. And he's thrown three interceptions today. After the three-yard game, they'll try Brown again. Stutters around the corner. Oh, he take a blow in the upper body by Andy Romanowski. Romanowski just came in and unloaded on D. Brown. And D. slow to get up. And if you're a linebacker, this is what you dream for. You've got a running back. You know, they're running the counter. He has to be patient. He has to wait on his offensive lineman. But when you catch him in the air, right here, wow. Romanowski oh, yeah. tagged him. D. Cleet. And you know what? Clean shot. Sure was. Clean. Nothing dirty about it. They go with this single back, D. Brown. Two wides. Top of your screen. Woodcock in motion. Third and short for Syracuse. Nudes. Short pass. Tight end. Manley got the first down to the 39. Second catch for first down today by Graham Manley, junior out of Albany, Maryland. And we talked about this yesterday, Dave. This is really not a typical Syracuse offense. Normally they've got the Marvin Harrisons, they've got the Quentin Spotwoods, the Kevin Johnsons, guys that can take it and go. They don't have that type of receiver. So what do you see, George DeLeon? He's involving the tight end more in the offense. I'll tell you what, it is really unusual to do a Syracuse game and not have at least one flyer on this team. Yeah, normally there's a burnt part of the turf. You know, there's the speed all over the place. And that play did not look good from the get-go. Dead ball, false start. Offense, five-yard penalty. We played it down. 
go down to John Sanders standing by with the governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. His name is Paul Salucci, and this is homecoming for the Boston College graduates. And you told me you're a double eagle. Is That's that right, right governor? I'm a, I'm a double eagle, a proud double eagle, business and law. And you graduated undergrad, what, 70, right? And you came back for law school. 73 from the law school. Went seven years straight here. Well, this is a great advertisement today for your state and your school, well, don't you think? Is, Boston College is a great school. The academics are great. Big time football. It's great for the school and it's great for Massachusetts. Thanks, Governor. Okay, thank you. Thanks, John. Thank you, Governor. And Malik Campbell had a chance to break the game open right here with a pass from Noons, the best pass that Noon has thrown to one of his guys, and he dropped it. And the one thing that you don't really see on TV at home, you know what? He's looking dead into the sun. I'm not making any excuses for Malik Campbell. Watch what he's looking back into. He looks like he looks it into his hands, but you know what? You got to like it. He realizes he had an opportunity gone bad. Noons can't believe it either. It's one of those days, young man. Mom said there'd be days like this. Mama said, Mama said. <laughs> <laughs> she, she didn't say it would last this long. <laughs> Second and long. I used to have better tune than that. Reverse, Woodcock. They've seen that play before, haven't they? Well smelled out by Willie Poole, the red shirt freshman from St. Albans, Queens in New York City. And this is the second time we've seen Willie Poole make a tremendous open field tackle. In the first half, he did it on, I love the ball fake by Troy Noons. Folks, it is not easy making a tackle and fighting off the left guard, Sean O'Connor. Good job, Willie Poole. You know, Willie's going to tell you, yeah, I had him the whole time. He doesn't want to see those guards all afternoon. No, no, not with a full head of steam. Coming up on 10 minutes to go, third quarter. Syracuse in a hole here, third and long. They need something. Straight drop. Noons, flyer. Man there, Woodcock had the weight. It's taken away. It's taken away. It's an interception for Boston College. Well, Parrott. So the sophomore from Brookline, Mass, not too far from here. BC will take over at its own 32, the fourth pick of the day on Troy Noon. And once again, it is a bad pass. Woodcock has parent beat. The ball stays in the air too long. See him able to close the ground. Woodcock having to wait for it. Then we've got a jump ball. You've got to like it when you've got a, a safety to six foot two. You bet. Here comes BC, see if they can capitalize. Oh, boy, that's, that could have saved one right there. Right up the middle. And Downing saved it. Eric Downing, the senior from Patterson, New Jersey, or said Washington was bye-bye. And that may tell you the strength of Cedric Washington. Eric Downing is six foot four, 306 pounds. Washington is dragging him two or three additional yards. And people that are BC fans realize that Cedric Washington's missed some time due to a bad knee. I'm not sure how bad it is anymore. Seven yard gain. Option, oh, now there. Ladies and gentlemen, that's how you play middle linebacker. Thank you for that example, Mr. Clifton Smith. And Chris Rippon, the uh, defensive coordinator from Syracuse says there are certain games that your light really comes on and you realize you can just cut it loose and play. Folks, this is how you defense the option. And this is how you tackle. Put your head into their chest, drive them back. Oh. Can you say Rydell to Rydell? That's right. <laughs> Textbook. That's why those helmets cost about 150 bucks each. I would hope they cost even more than that. Geez, 840, fake the uh, draw. Are you kidding me? He makes that connection? Wow, nicely done by Ryan Utzler. Makes the catch, daring throw by Hassel back into some serious coverage. And Ryan makes his sixth catch of the season. And the backup free safety, Charles Burton, oblivious to where the football is. And you know what, you have to like Hasselbeck. You know, he just got stuck on the option play. What does he do? He comes back and he throws up a little help. One thing. Mr. Burton, find out where the football is. It's one thing to run along with him and cover him. Locate the ball. Got an injured player on the field, Ricky Simpkins, senior from Middle Village, Queens, New York. 
Hasselbeck, his numbers, 5 of 13, 47 yards. Tell you what, he's not going to be real pleased about that because Hasselbeck came in the ninth most efficient quarterback in the country. And you have to wonder, we saw and did the game last year, Syracuse, B.C., a thriller, 24-23. I'm convinced that somebody from one of these teams, whether it be a Greenwood, whether it be a Hasselbeck, whether it be a Washington, a Green, somebody's going to stand up and be a star. Guarantee you, Frank Chamberlain will never forget the game he played last year against Syracuse. That's for sure. Daniels and Reed were at the top of the screen. Hasselbeck nowhere to run. And Cedric Washington says, yeah, thanks a lot. I'll uh, do you a favor later, too. There will be no Christmas cards <laughs> exchanged right there. <laughs> oh, really? Hasselbeck <laughs> makes it on the edge. And you know what? If it gets too hot in the kitchen, what do you do? <laughs> you leave. Oh, man. They'll have they'll have a conversation about this one. Washington figures, OK, this play's over. Okay, I'm done. And boom, here's the ball. Just wanted to make sure you were paying attention. Loss on that play. Second down, 12. 49 of Syracuse. Good elusiveness by Washington. Barely gets back to the line of scrimmage, though. Outstanding speed. A fired up Clifton Smith. Help from his strong safety, Keon Walker. And also making a hit, number 52, Moreland Greenwood. I found it amazing yesterday when we visited with the coaches. Last Wednesday, Moreland Greenwood, on his own, goes back to the Syracuse football offices, is watching the practice film from Wednesday at 1 in the morning. That totally blew me away. Not like, you know, I was like, okay, 1 o'clock in the morning, that's one thing. I thought he'd be watching, I thought the kicker, he was watching game tape, he's watching practice. They're showing blitz, they bring it. Recognition is there, almost a pick. Flag, there it is, a late one. Tried to squeeze it into Reed, Will Hunter, out of Chester, Pennsylvania. It's like the guilty party. Pass interference on the defense. The spot foul, automatic first down. Pascaloni saying, hey, they allowed a little bit of a jam. Paul, linebacker at Penn State in his day. Showing that fire. Once again, you see the receiver running a quick little slant. Right there is your problem. Coach P, I'm sorry, there's no, there's no question about this one. You can't put your hands on them. Good call by the guys in the striped uniforms. So first down for BC. Ball up to Syracuse, 46. Good play inside. J.R. Johnson, we called his number a lot. Number 45, he was very active. And he does the job on that play. Let's take a look at the Volkswagen Big East leaders. The rushing category, Boston College and Syracuse, two and three respectively in the conference, entering today's action, Miami. And West Virginia, but Virginia Tech, 304 yards. A lot of it by a guy named, everybody now, Vic. Second down and eight. Under six and a half to go, third quarter. And you know what? That play going nowhere as well. Outstanding defensive stand by the Syracuse Orangemen. That counter went nowhere. Pettijohn, we call his name, got in from behind there. And what BC was trying to do was block their tight end to seal the backside. Always important, watch the bottom of your screen. You see number 82, Robert Ellis trying to seal the backside. Unfortunately, doesn't quite do that. We talked about it earlier. There's no substitution for speed. Both of these defensive ends for Syracuse can run. Third down long. What, 217 for Syracuse right now. Buck 54 is not shabby. Home run ball. Got to fly down there. Can he make the catch? He does! Jamal Burke going to be first and goal for Boston College at the six-yard line. What a catch. I'm not sure you'll see a better catch this weekend. This is what we call throwing it down the chimney. Jamal Burke looking straight over his back. Tremendous kind of you know, And one thing about it, catches the football with his hands. 
doesn't let the turf know. He's happy about it. Great job, young man. As well, he should. Keep it on the ground. Green for six. Green for six. He's got it. Touchdown, Boston College. Boy, Green saw that one all the way. And the Eagles extend it to 19 to six. And you see one of the first guys to congratulate him, number 84, Jamal Burke. We said somebody's going to step up and make a big play in this game. First big play, Tim Hasselback. Great throw, great catch by number 84, Burke. Green at 13 carries, 105. The yardage, point after. Sutton, like somebody might have got a piece of it, but it goes through nonetheless. First offensive touchdown on the afternoon here at Boston College. Green scores it. And for William Green, another touchdown in the books. It's BC with a 13-point lead. Ball number 84, number one, architects of that last scoring uh, play for Boston College. For Green, his 10th touchdown of the season. It was set up. Jamal Burke, fabulous catch. Look at this, baby. This is a say hey Willie catch. Folks, it doesn't get any better than that. And you see how he uses his hands? That's tremendous concentration. 39 yards on that catch. Six yard run by Green, his 10th TD of the season. 10 play, 68 yards, just over four and a half to go. And Syracuse really needs a return. And dragged down from behind, Maurice Jackson is taken down by Ralph Parent. Now for an update, let's head back to Mike Leeson in the AT&T studio for an update. Well, Dave, uh, Northwestern and Purdue. The scoring has slowed down a little bit, uh, but the Boilermakers tack on some more numbers. Drew Brees to John Staniford. Third touchdown pass by Brees. Second reception by Staniford that went for six. 21 14 Purdue over Northwestern. Let's go back to Chestnut Hill with Dave and Jeff. All right, Mike, thank you very much. 20 to 6, Boston College. This is an important Big East Conference game for both of these clubs, especially for BC already 0 and 2 in the conference. From the 25, here's Noons, pitch back, Mungro. Got the edge, got the first down as he's run out of bounds. They'll knock him out of bounds at the 42 yard line. Picks up 17 on that play. We talked about the, the importance of the Big East. And the one thing, if you're Boston College, you're three and two, you're 0 and two in the conference. Syracuse really got away with the gift last week, beating Pittsburgh. You know, both field goal kickers missing, a little short chip shots in overtime. I think it's more important to BC for one reason. Their upcoming schedule gets, gets pretty stiff late in the year. We'll run that down for you. James Mungra, seven carries for 114 yards and continuing. Picks up another three or four straight up the middle. Andy Romanowski there, number 52. We touched on this in the first half, Dave. Syracuse cannot leave what, what has been their best asset this uh, afternoon offensively. You've got to be able to run the ball. You've got to use this offensive line and control the clock. They're only two scores away from being back in this thing. You see Mungro's numbers. Eight carries for a gaudy, almost 15 yards per carry. 4.33 to go in the third quarter, too. Blitz is coming. And Mungro dragged down by his collar by Romanowski. It's going to be close to a first. Actually, it's going to be a yard short. If you look at the linesman. Yard short of a first down. You know what happens sometimes when you're you're an offensive or defensive coordinator? You really outthink yourself. You know, this game is not real simple. Yeah, you know, it, it we don't we make it more difficult than what it actually is. If our big people are beating your big people and we can run the ball, stay with it. Let's see what they do here. A little bit more than a yard. Let's call it a long one. Jackson in motion, they're gonna throw. Noons tight in, third time they've gone to Graham Manley for a first down, and he's come through. But again, boy, what a difference. You watch Syracuse all these years, Coach Mack, we saw Coach Mack upstairs, and Paul Pasqualoni, 
always flyers on this ball club. They don't have it. It's totally different. Talking about the wide receivers. And now we're talking about tight ends and possession type receiving. And the one thing it does, Dave, it takes you a long time to go from the 30-yard line oh, no and question. travel 70 yards without making a mistake. That's right. Well, Perrin on that tackle. First and 10 for Syracuse. Mungo looking for room. Boy, he's just slicing the dice. Nice job. Picks up another seven. Nunez. Check that noon, rather. Five for 13 passing. 72 yards and four interceptions. Meanwhile, the run game. O-line, they're doing it. Look at this block. Oh, man, Romanowski. And the thing you're looking at, you're seeing the BC defensive line push two, three yards off the line of scrimmage. What does that do again? We talk about the running back going six, seven yards without being touched. Kelly Yanidis, a good block. Mungro again. Boy, they're just slapping some plastic in there, aren't they? Grinding it out. Guy named Hayes would have liked this. I don't know how much you would like it if you were a defensive back right now. <laughs> no. If you're Ramon Johnson, you've got to get sick of seeing D. Brown. You've got to get sick of seeing James Mungro being the first person to tackle him. And this is the part of the field where if you're Frank Spaziani, you know what? This is the time to get after him and bliss. See if they bring it. They've got four down linemen. High formation. Noons. Pitch back. Mungro. Got a couple of blocks. He's into some... Free space and then taken down inside the 25. And a good tackle once again by Willie Poole, number 13. Bryce the King High School, same school that produced Lamar Odom. LA Clippers, great women's basketball there, perennial national championship contenders. That has got to be the graveyard of the NBA, isn't it? Oh, man. There's a lot. They got, a, they got a lot of new kids out there. Maybe, maybe it'll turn, start to turn this year. Second down and five. Under a minute 50 to play. Option. Noons. The cut to the 20s. Close to a first down. Boy, this is so un Syracuse like. Well, the one thing we did yesterday when we asked George DeLeon, the offensive coordinator, about Troy Noons. And you said, how does he compare to the other quarterbacks you've coached here? <laughs> and he basically said, don't go there. You know what? He's had three guys that are, are phenomenal. Donovan McNabb, there are a lot of schools that go through trying to find a replacement. Virginia Tech will go through that before long. You bet. Michael Vick, as a matter of fact, was recruited by Syracuse, but he didn't want to be the next Donovan McNabb. Third down, maybe a foot and change. Play action. Two receivers. Noons backside. This work against Virginia Tech. This is going to be a touchdown to Aaron Lewis. They beat Virginia Tech at the Carrier Dome a couple of years ago with this play. Touchdown, Syracuse. The throw back to the tight end. Boy, was that wide open or what? Gutsy call by the uh, Syracuse offensive staff. This is obviously a play they've used many times in the past, yes, and you know what it does? This pumps energy into your whole sideline. Your defense feels good about it. Noons. Simply a throw and catch. Good air. Aaron Lewis is a guy that's uh, receiving the touchdown. Good concentration. Once again, we're talking about the Syracuse offense throwing to a tight end. It's unusual. First catch, first touchdown of the season for Mr. Lewis. Point after Schaefer. Almost blocked. It goes through. Got a ball game, folks. 56 seconds to go, third quarter. And some life from the Syracuse offense. Finally, 20 to 13, Boston College. Throwback was wide open to the senior from Bayview, Texas, Aaron Lewis. You certainly can't begrudge Aaron Lewis his happiness, his second career catch at Syracuse. Both have been for touchdowns. Dave, when you're able to run the football, this play action works. Watch the linebacking core from BC right there. Everybody is flowing. If you're a BC guy, you're flowing to your right. Well, Noons puts the ball down, throws back across the field. We've seen this play umpteen times, right? It always works. Stephen Bromiski caught a huge pass a couple of years ago at Virginia Tech. Against Virginia Tech, that was up the carrier dome. And you see Frank Spaziani, the defensive coordinator from BC. 
You see the scoring drive, nine plays, 74 yards, four minutes and 27 seconds. The pressure is now on the BC offense you to bet. get it in gear, control the clock, and let their defense rest. Well, the kickoff return is Daniels from the two. He broke it big last year against these Orangemen. He's taken down at the 31-yard line. Good throwdown tackle by Cliff Snell, a senior defensive end from Worcester, Mass. 33 yards on that kickoff return. What about that? Hasselbeck's numbers last year were six for 13, a buck 61. He had a touchdown run against Syracuse. He's still got some time on the clock. He can make some things happen. 45 seconds here, third quarter. Did we expect anything different heading into the fourth quarter? Told you it was going to be a sluggo. Try it again. Here's Green. Tried to cut it back, cut it back right into some trouble, folks. Jeff, you, you've been calling it all day. Pick a hole, go with it. Rich Scanlon, the tackle for Syracuse. Number 57, a redshirt freshman from Oradell, New Jersey. The one thing is an offense, when your defense is not able to get the opposing offense off the field, it's tough to get rhythm. You know, when you're, when you're sitting out there and you're two or three minutes in possession, then you turn the ball over with a punt, it's tough to get that offensive consistency. You bet. Coming into this possession, Syracuse was plus almost seven minutes of uh, ball possession ahead of Boston College. Second down long, Hasselback. Swing it outside, Green dropped it. He had a closing Willie Ford, supported by Scanlon. And that'll do it for the third quarter. If you take a hard look, you're seeing the momentum switch to the orange side of the field. Green with that touchdown, but Syracuse answered with the throwback pass to Lewis. Got a ball game heading into the fourth quarter. BC by seven. Good look at the heights here in the Boston area, Chestnut Hill, Mass. Boston College, our host today, Gene Filippo, the athletic director. 28 to 13 BC over Syracuse starting the fourth quarter and Jeff during the break they made a pretty good call. This could be the biggest third down call of BC's uh, season thus far. They move the tight end Ellis to the right side. Read top of your screen. They've got Hemmings at the bottom. Quick drop slant. It's there. Hemmings got hit. Loose ball. Loose ball. Syracuse has got it. And they're going to call it an incomplete pass. That might even be better for Syracuse because they're going to force a punt and they're going to come away with plus field position here. Syracuse Orangeman, there's Duke Pettijohn. And once again, you've got a guy that had an opportunity to catch the ball. Hemmings drops a touchdown in the first half. This is just a quick slant. You have to believe if you can break this tackle, you've got a first oh, down. That's a fumble. Well, that's really that's close. A fumble. That is really close. Holy it looked like he had both feet down. Yeah, Hemmings, buddy. You know what? The receiver thinks it's a fumble. Yeah. Sam O'Brien not real happy. They pressure. Good punt. Campbell. Oh, he didn't make the catch. And he's going to let it bounce. Oh, there's a break for BC. It's going to go dead. At, call it the 19, call it the 20 yard line. Ball this got ball, partially tipped. This but ball was deflected. Yeah, it was deflected almost like he propelled it too because that was a good punt. 50 yards on the punt. When we come back, Syracuse with the ball and a chance to do some damage. <laughs> Folks, this call is a difference between 35 and 40 yards worth of field for the Syracuse Orangemen. Watch what happens here. And we've got a different angle. Close call. Keith Hemmings, the intended receiver. I'm sorry, One, folks. Two. two feet are down. Contact is made. Fumble. And Hemmings, look at him reaching. It's about a 40-yard change in possession. No doubt about it. Syracuse facing into the sun with a chance to get this game tied up or take the lead with a two-point conversion. Will they try to grind it out? Well, certainly in the first play, they gave it a shot. Not much running room. Paul Cook stops D. Brown. And you saw who made first contact, number 96, Ryan Birch. One of the guys that they have sorely missed been out for a good portion of the last couple of games with a knee injury, sustained it against Navy. 
And this is one of the areas of their football team that they're very thin right now. Yeah, Ryan Burks was a victim of a chop block in that Navy game. Missed the last couple of weeks. Everybody up close, look at this. Aaron Lewis, tight end in motion. Noons is gonna throw it. Got protection, throws sideline, no good. First time they've made a run at Jamal Riddle. Redshirt freshman from Meriden, Connecticut. There you go. Can't come up with it, and let's go down to John Sanders. Standing by right now with Kelvin Martin, who went into the Hall of Fame at BC today, former Super Bowl winner back in 91. Must feel good to come home and uh, be part of the Hall of Fame at your alma mater. Oh, it feels great. Uh, it's a tremendous honor. I'm thrilled to death. And, uh, just to get back and look at the stadium, how, how, how much has changed since I played, it's just tremendous. Let's wait one more play. Kelvin Martin, a real good performer here and in the NFL. Get back to him in a second. Here's Noons. He's had a bad day throwing, uh, and it continues. Try to get it to Riddle on a little comeback pattern. Let's get back to John. Well, Jeff Bostick's got his Super Bowl rings upstairs. What are you up to now? Well, I'm coaching down at Jacksonville University. That's where I live at, and um, I'm down there coaching the receivers down there. Uh, pretty good program. We're doing a great job. And, um, Found out I was in the Hall of Fame, came up here with the family, had a great weekend. Everybody's been tremendous and been nice and everything, so we're enjoying it. Welcome home. Thanks a lot. All right, back upstairs. All right, thank you, John. Thank you, Kelvin. Outstanding performance. You, uh, did you crunch heads with him? or? Uh, no, he was an offensive, that's an offensive player. That's right. And you know what? I can say this because for some odd reason, my uh, alma mater inducted me into the Hall of Fame a couple years ago. I remember ago. that. There's nothing like it. I'll bet. There's a wobbly kick. And a great, oh, unbelievable Syracuse roll. Pick up another 15 yards, maybe 20. On the punt by Mike Schaefer. It's a pretty good coverage. As they exchange field position out, it'll be BC ball. That punt carrying 51 yards, the last 15, 20 of it on the roll. Let's take a look right now at the Bex Beer Game Summary. 13.40 to go here, fourth quarter. And BC about to take over. Total offense, not bad for BC. Green, 103 in the ground. Rushing yards, you would expect to see a heck of a lot more points on the board given some of these numbers, but the difference of quarterback, Troy, Troy Nunes has not had a good day. And the one thing that really stands out, 100, 249 yards of total offense for BC. Up in the air, no sir! Camella could not come down with it. Quick Hasselbeck. Had the ball partially tipped. And then it was uh, broken up by Keon Walker. Check that number 29, it's Quentin Harris. You talk about the keys of the game. 249 yards of total offense for Boston College. They had 162 the first quarter. It may say something about number one, Syracuse's offense and holding the ball. This is another one of those opportunities when it presents itself, you have to catch the football. That ball is not tipped. Hasselbeck put a lot of air in there. Tom O'Brien said they're going to take their shots deep off of play action. Washington into a swarm of orange. And right now, Syracuse is, is controlling the line of scrimmage. Yes, they are. And if there was one thing that Tom O'Brien and his staff felt comfortable with, it's how their offensive line matched up with Syracuse. I asked him an interesting question as we left his office yesterday. When you look across the field and see Paul Pasqualoni and Syracuse, what do you see? He said, I see a good football coach. Look at his bowl record. Look at his winning percentage. He says, they do what we ascend to do. Second in the Big East. Total yards, has spent a little bit of time. Step, throw, got a man. First down. Dedrick DeWalt out of bounds at the 39. Check that, the 41-yard line for the first down. So good throw by Hasselbeck. Hasselbeck's number, 7 of 18 for 96 yards. Just a little down and out. When you've got speed like DeWalt, you have no choice of that cornerback like Will Allen but to give him that cushion. Top receiver in the ball club is DeWalt. First down play, Washington gets the call. Run him up the middle. And it's you getting see the to a linebacker Clifton Smith on the tackle. And it's getting to a point in the game where you go, well, that, that was three and a half yards. Well, let's do the math. Three and a half, three and a half, three and a half, move the chain, right? Mm -hmm. Right now, if you're BC, you're not worried as much about scoring. You're worried about controlling the clock, moving the chains, 
because right now clock is the biggest enemy Syracuse has. Mm -hmm. That and a quarterback with a cold hand. I wouldn't even say cold. How about ice cold? Frosty brew. Sounds good. <laughs> Hasselbeck steps in, hangs in. No, sir. Got to get it to walk. Post pattern. Pretty well covered down there. A little tangle of feet, and Will Allen comes up limping. Senior out of Corcoran High School in Syracuse. And this is a play where you'd like to see your, your receiver get inside of the corner. This ball could have been picked off and probably should have been. And the one thing you have to feel successful about, if you're Syracuse, you, ball hit, well, hit that, much better break. You know what? It? That's why Will is a cornerback. Amen. I mean, it hit him in a bad place, right? Burke resets top of your screen, 5 of 11 on third down conversion. Hasselbeck, they bring the blitz. He hangs in, throws, broken up. Nice defensive play, Will Allen. Again, another opportunity for a pick, but does his job. He breaks up the pass. Chris Rippon, the defensive coordinator for Syracuse, is coming with the blitz. Look at the number of orange helmets. There's one thing that BC has been able to do this year, and that's protect their quarterback. They've only given up two sacks the entire year. Man-to-man -man coverage, you have to win those battles. Here's McMyler for the punt. Oh boy, they made a real good effort to get that one. Campbell, they get a break. Goes into the end zone for touchback. Campbell doesn't look real sure of himself as Snell almost got a piece. Syracuse ball when we return at the 20. Still plenty of time to go in this seven point game. 11.52 to go fourth quarter. Seven point Boston College lead. They try to hold off the Syracuse Orangemen. Syracuse about to put the ball in play. At their own 20 yard line. Big game folks. BC 3 and 2 overall. More importantly 0 and 2 in the Big East. Syracuse 3 and 2 overall. 1 and 0 in the Big East. And Troy Nunes has thrown four interceptions. He does have one TD pass. And that was a couple of possessions ago. Here's Nunes on the option. Back to Mungra, who's been rolling up big yardage. Draws a crowd. And he picks up about six on that play. A couple of possessions ago. Good looking drive by the Syracuse Orangemen. And they did a good job featuring their running back, James Mungra. And this is one thing they've been doing all afternoon. Between the 20s, Syracuse's offense has been dynamic. Down in the red area, they've blown a, a bunch of scoring opportunities. One that they did take advantage of, hitting the tight end Aaron Lewis for a touchdown. The one thing, Dave, does this offense have the patience and the discipline to drive 80 yards for a score? Because we're not talking about a three or four play strike kind of offense that we're used to seeing in Syracuse. And Noons gets erased in a hurry there. Good job. Yeah, Tom Martin in there is Keith Levitt. Richard Freshman, Fitchburg Mass. And you're talking about Syracuse in the red zone. They came in 14 of 19. But the one thing I will guarantee you with 10 minutes and 45 seconds to go, if you had asked Frank Spaziani, the defensive coordinator from BC, if you held Syracuse to 13 points, are you happy? Oh. He'll take it. Boy, he'd pick up a check if he knew that was going to happen. Third down and two. They're in the option. He didn't get it. Not even close. Barely got back to the line of scrimmage. Outstanding defensive play. Outstanding. Ralph Perrin has made a bunch of plays all afternoon. Number 24. We talked about it earlier. This is not a complex game. Put the ball in the hand of the guys that can make the plays. Where has D. Brown been? How about James Mungro? Uh, Troy Noons has had one of those days he would like to forget. Use your playmakers. In big games, big players make big plays. BC, love to get a block right here. Schaefer's back to punt. They're going for the return, and the return is going to be to the right. They call a fair catch at the 32-yard line for DeWalt. Dedrick DeWalt out of Chicago, Simeon Vocational. So 9.38 to go, 41 yards on that punt. James Mungro didn't touch the ball on an important third down play for Syracuse. BC ball when we come back.
One of the great landmarks here in Boston, the Prudential Building, to your right, just outside here, Alumni Stadium here, Chestnut Hill, Mass, as we look towards downtown Boston. And BC fans would like to get a couple of credentials here. And some insurance points. How about some peroxide? <laughs> yeah, good. That's somebody's son, uh, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are you doing with your 30,000? Well, this is what I'm getting with it up here at Boston College. What do you mean you can't get this paint off of my face? You love to see that spirit from your alma mater, believe me. Mm-hmm. Hasselbeck, 7 of 20 passing, 97 yards. Green with 103 yards rushing and a touch. Washington, 60 yards. Green running hard. Keon Walker met him in the hole. And let's go to Mike Gleason in our AT&T studio. Update on Minnesota, Ohio State. Well, Dave, the Buckeye quarterback, Steve Bellasari, was 4 of 13 for 79 yards. Now he's 9 of 19 for 124 yards. And here's a touchdown grab right there by Darnell Sanders. Things are getting interesting now at homecoming in Columbus, Ohio. 23-17, Gophers still on top, 11-12 to go in the game. Simsy? All right, Mike, thank you. Ohio State, one of the few uh, remaining unbeaten teams in the nation. Big struggle homecoming. Those Minnesota Golden Gophers. Under nine to play here. Counter Trey, fake it. Pettijohn pursued a hassle back, and he shoves him out of bounds, and Duke... <laughs> Wow, some good agility on the sideline. Who was that? One of the one of the equipment guys just did a heck of a move. You see him jump over the bench. And the one thing you'd like to see from your own bench, if you're running out of bounds, somebody, somebody catch you. Catch you. Yeah, honest okay? to goodness. It's almost like baseball when the opposing catcher's right. coming over to catch a fly ball. Well, you never help him, but right. if it's yours, you help him. Watch the athleticism of Pettijohn. Oh, that's my man on the on the yard marker who jumped. And Pettijohn, yeah, somebody, dude, I'm on your team. Grab him. <laughs> you know what, Duke, you can run through a lot of things, but I don't think you can run through those benches very long. This man right here holding the down marker, outstanding agility. You know what over. he just said? They're not paying me enough to take this head to head, okay? <laughs> Look at him. He said, you know what? I bet I got a cold frost brew at home. I'm going to enjoy that this evening. I think you may make that plural. With teeth. With teeth. That's exactly right. That's our play of the day, everybody. <laughs> You know what, Tom O'Brien cannot be happy with his offense after the first quarter. They have basically been held to 100 yards for two and a half quarters. Third down and long, Syracuse will be looking for turnover here. They're showing everybody, bringing almost everybody. Throw, no catch. And no flags either. Three and done for the BC offense. Lord knows the door is well I mean, well wide open for Syracuse to do something here. 8.46 to go fourth quarter. Good job by Boston College's offensive line protecting their quarterback. Once again, you have one-on-one -on -one routes, man-to-man -man coverage. Your receivers and quarterbacks have to win. McMiler, let's see if they come after him. They do. Got it off. Drew a crowd, didn't he? Great kick. Campbell signals, makes the fair catch at about the third. I got a signal and fair catch. Are right, you shielding for the sun? Okay. Got it to the 16 yard line. He's shielding for the sun. Good read by the officials. He makes a heck of a catch here. Nice job by Malik Campbell retreating and then from the 10 and did well to get it across the 15 yard line. 55 yards on that punt. And the one thing BC is doing well, their punter giving him tremendous field position. They're making the Syracuse Orangemen's offense go a long distance. Yep. I'm not sure this is the type of offense that can put together an 84, 85 yard drive. That's right, not the quick strike of old, but right now the clock is on their side if they want to grind it out, 36 to go, and they give it to Dee Brown. Dee Brown, good run to the 24 yard line. Gain of eight. Now if you're George DeLeon, Go back to your running backs. Time now for our Where Are They Now? Brought to you by HotJobs.com. Guy named Flutie. Pretty good run up here. Heisman Trophy winner. Canadian Football League. Top player four times. And quarterback with the Buffalo Bills. And guess what? I think they're going to be pointing to the right arm to bring him in. I need somebody out of the pen in Buffalo. Tell you what, they didn't do him right last year oh, in the playoffs. Was, Here's Noons. Great fake. Can he set and throw? Can he connect? He's got a man wide open. Deep Brown, open field. Down he goes into BC territory, 46-yard line. A lot of time there for Noons, and he converts in a big play. 
And once again, he missed a wide open tight end. Graham Manley is about seven yards behind the secondary, right in the middle of the field. When you're running this football the way they are, safeties are drawn up. You know, he's still able to complete this pass. Trust me, number 89, Graham Manley, is wide open in the middle of the football field. You can see on that replay that he locked on D. Brown from second one. That's why he didn't catch a tight end. Ball at the 45 of BC, Syracuse. Love to put a tying score on the board here. Pitch it on the end around to Woodcock. Knocked out of bounds. He gets inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. Pat Woodcock on the carry. Tremendous block on the edge by number six, D. Brown. We talk about his ability of running the football. You see him going to the left out of the backfield, kind of a trick play. D. Brown one-on-one -on -one with Ooh, Willie Poole. Pancake. Good job of blocking. And the one thing you got to do out there if you're going to use your hands, use them inside the framework of the chest. Good job by uh, D. Brown. Noon, seven for 17, a buck 24, a touch and four picks. But Syracuse on the move. BC territory right now, they're on the option. This has not worked a lot, but it works here. A lot of open room, great block. He got a super block in the secondary from his fullback, Chris Davis, first down Syracuse. Chris Davis, number 34, that's a fullback delight. And it was one of the most unusual blocks I've seen in a long time. It was almost like a flying wedge. Watch the right side of your screen. Davis just dives out and almost right there. Hits Ramon Johnson, number six. Boy, that made that play, didn't it? You know what? That is one of those things we call a KO block. You see that body flying around? And then unloading is Steve Martin on noon. Syracuse on the move here, folks. Coming up on six minutes to go. Tight end Manley, run option left side. Mungro with some room. Mungro to the corner. And does well to pick up a couple of yards. Nice play defensively. Lenny Walls over there for Boston College. This game has played itself out so much like 99. Ramon Johnson, beg your pardon. Syracuse was driving late last year. Frank Chamberlain comes up with a big interception. Is there somebody in that BC huddle that is the bell cow that can stand up and make a play when you need one? What a sound that bell right now. If you're a BC defender, second and long. Big running room, Mungo slipped. Hit by Ryan Birch. Look at Ryan, former fullback. Moved to middle linebacker this past spring. If you're Syracuse, you're looking at one of the downs that has been your Achilles heel ah, this there season. It is. Third down and five, but you've got to believe, you've got to believe you're in two down territory with five minutes and 42 seconds to go. Mungro tripped over P.J. Alexander's ankle. Third down five, huge play. Noons, pump fake, screen, throw back left side. Got blockers, Mungro can't get it. Super play. Oh, that's outstanding for Boston College. Sean Ryan, the junior from Buffalo, New York. Once again, they go back to their bag of tricks. This worked in the third quarter. You cannot stress enough how good an open field tackle this is by number 89, Sean Ryan. Really surprised they're going for this field goal attempt. 35 yard attempt, left hash. Mike Schaefer, he was one for five last week. He's got a couple today. And he missed it, wide left. 446 to go, and an opportunity goes wide for Syracuse. Boy, there's a defensive stand. That's a killer for, a potential killer for Syracuse. Schaefer with a field goal from 24, one from 27, but he missed from 35 here with 446 to go. They'll have to regroup, regroup when we come back to Chestnut Hill. Frank Spaziani, defensive coordinator for BC, got his boys rallied around him. They held off Syracuse. Syracuse, another struggle from the kicking game. John Sanders got more on that, the Mike Schaefer story. And we'll get that in a couple seconds here. BC gonna take over. 
at their own 20. And by the quarter, or a late game situation, like runners in scoring position late game. Not getting it done. What's BC do here now? They run Washington. They will see a steady pounding right now. Say one thing, these two, uh, the O lines and the D lines, will have uh, some serious respect for each other coming out of this game, no matter who wins or loses. And this is where, as an offensive lineman, this is where you want the game. You want it where we can control the clock. Boston College with four seniors and four minutes and 20 seconds to go in this game. Put it on our back. If we don't give the ball back to Syracuse, we don't lose. Game, set, match. If you're, beast, if you're Syracuse now, you're looking for strips. Grabbing for the ball. Good form tackle in the, the hole there by Keon Walker, the strong safety. Let's go down to John Sanders. You talk a little bit about Mike Schaefer. He's used to being in the spotlight. Unfortunately, in the last couple of weeks, it has been in a negative way. He had a nightmarish game last week against Pittsburgh. Could have won the ball game in regulation, had a chance to win it in overtime, but he missed four field goals in that game. As a matter of fact, during the course of the week, there were more requests to talk to Mike Schaefer than Troy Noon. He handled every interview. He turned away nobody, and he met it head on, and he may have more questions after this game, although the field goal, of course, would not have tied nor given them the lead. Thank you, John, and uh, glad to hear that the young man met the uh, met the adversity head on. Slant patterns there, good. The completion for a first down for Boston College to Jamal Burt. Jamal, a little less strut, babe. We got a long way to go. 3:10 to go on the clock. And they say life is about timing. Tim Hasselback releases that ball just before he tastes gunpowder. Burke with good concentration, once again, one-on-one -on -one coverage. This is where you want it if you're an offense. Mm -hmm. You know what? Put the ball in our backfield. Let's run the first down. You know what? I don't get the impression that Tom O'Brien's the kind of guy to be into a lot of dancing on the football field. Agree, disagree, discuss. He's not into illegal procedure calls also <laughs> with two minutes and 54 seconds to play. And you know what, he didn't want to say this when we met with him yesterday, speaking of Tom O'Brien. Dead ball, false start, offense. Five yard penalty, we played it out. First BC penalty. And I said, you know what, the team that loses this game is really gonna be behind the eight ball. He goes, not really. <laughs> and I'm thinking, well, you're, you're looking at maybe three and three, you're 0 and three in the conference, but you know what? He said one thing, we're trying to build a program like Syracuse mm -hmm. that's able to compete at the highest level of the Big East win conference championships Get the bowl and go games. to a string of bowl games. Well, he took that first step last year. Here's an important play, and they're all important, 233 in County. Little play action for Hasselbeck. Under pressure, got a man there. Oh, that's a heck of a catch. It's not good for first down, but Robert Ellis, that's a big play. BC needed that one. That sets up a second and about two at the 40-yard line. And the one thing it does, it keeps the clock running. When you're throwing the ball late in the game with the lead, it's typically a conservative throw, number one, that can be easily completed, that keeps the clock running, and that's exactly what happened. I'm not sure how high a completion rate that they would have with this play. It does keep the clock running under two minutes. You bet, nine for 23, a buck 16 for Hasselbeck today. Boy, Syracuse. Got everybody bunched up. Head to head, hand to hand. Here we go. Good clock management. They get the playoff with three seconds to go. Forge ahead with Washington for the first down. And you know what? That'll make Syracuse start calling some times out. Clock at a buck 34. Tom O'Brien that far away from the first conference win in the year 2000. So what do you think? Let's go back. Pasqualoni goes for the field goal from 35 yards out, about 4.46 to go. Even if he makes, he would have needed another stop. And not only are you going for a field goal to maybe close it to 20 to 16. They do get the first down. You can tell by the crowd reaction. The enemy was not the score. The enemy is the clock. You bet. I'm sure Tom O'Brien was as relieved as anybody. He said, oh, he's going to go for a field goal, 4.46? I like my chances. You see the timeout situation. 
And now if you're BC, this really has come down to three plays. That's right. If you're able to make a first down in three plays, this game is over. And the one thing that the coaches are telling the running backs right now. Hold on to the ball with we don't, both hands. We don't care if you go three yards, 16 yards, finish with the football. No question about it. BC's won eight of the last nine here against Syracuse. However, over the last five meetings, Syracuse has won four and lead the series 25 to 15. Next week, you'll have a choice of games in the Big East Network. Jeff and I will be at the Miami Temple game, the improving Temple Owls, the number six Miami Hurricanes. Ken Dorsey, was he poised last week in that winning drive against Florida State? Or some of you will see the Boston College Eagles against another improving team here in the Big East Conference, the Pittsburgh Panthers. Check your local listings for those noontime starts next Saturday here at your Big East Football Network. Here we go with 1.34 to go. AC. Washington straight up the middle. Nice run, nice surge to the 48. Going to make Syracuse burn yet another timeout. And this is what we refer to as bone on bone football. Boy, I tell you what, Paul Pasqualani and the Syracuse folks will go back to central New York, ruining the missed opportunities they had offensively. They had an opportunity on several occasions to put some, put a bunch of touchdowns on the board and didn't come through. And the difference in the game is the play of the quarterback. Not that, not that Tim Hasselbeck had a great game statistically. But he didn't kill him. The one thing he did not do, he did not throw the interception. Troy Noons with four of them this afternoon. And the thing that kills you, Dave, right before the half, you're down on the five-yard line and you go away with no points. That's right. Well, that, that was as bad as the uh, pick. That was taken in by uh, Waltz. Let's take a look at our best play of the game. It's brought to you by the good folks at Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people. And there's the interception. Lenny Walls will not, <laughs> doesn't come any freer than that, does it? You know, right now, that is the difference in this football game. We talk about turnovers. Syracuse had taken care of the ball very well the first five games. Only six turnovers this afternoon, four interceptions. 127 to go. Washington, the call, just runs it straight up. Close to a first down on that second down on about five. And that'll do it. That's Syracuse final timeout of the afternoon. Syracuse next week will play host to the Virginia Tech Hokies. Paul Pasqualoni with a buck 18 left on the clock. Timeouts are done. We talked about how important a game this was for Boston College and what lay ahead for them in their schedule in this year 2000. Number one, it was important because they were 0-2 in the conference. Mm -hmm. But when you look at their schedule, next week at Pittsburgh, they come back and host uh, Rutgers. They host Temple. And you're talking about two tough games on the road at Notre Dame, at Miami. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> That's why this game a must-have. And this is a pride thing right now. If you're an offensive lineman, the one thing you said, well, you could – we can punt the ball and Syracuse could probably get it back with 30 seconds. You want to end the game on the field. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. The offensive line. Ball game pretty much be, belongs to them. Just a matter of the uh, running backs. Maintaining possession. Do not put the ball on the floor. And their offensive line re didn't really perform the way I thought they would this afternoon, but you've got to credit Syracuse's defense. They did a good job. But the one thing is when it's crunch time with four and a half minutes to go, they stepped up. There we go. Hasselback. Oh, look at Freeney. Look at Freeney. Backside play. Dwight Freeney. Tremendous speed. It'll force a punt. And again, remember, Syracuse without a timeout. Hasselbeck runs well, but not nearly enough to beat Freeney. And the one thing I don't understand, why do we go to this play selection? You know, you've got third down and two, and you're trying to take your quarterback uh, 
I'm sorry, but he's not going to outrun Dwight Freeney or put Pettijohn on any day. Unless you get somebody peeling back to pick him up. You know what? It better be downhill also. There is no flag for illegal participation. You know, use your running back. Well, we've seen some curious calls today, haven't what, we? What do we say? Run the ball, what, north, north and, and south. south? Nothing good going east and west. Now some confusion. Let's see, they're going to work the play clock, and well, they should. 19 on the play clock, 57 on the game clock. So they're going to milk this one. Take some more time off. Savvy play by the Boston College folks. And you wouldn't think Tom O'Brien would probably snap the ball and maybe take a safety, would you? No. I probably they're so. going to play clock runs out. Uh, I mean, he'll take the penalty. His kicker has done a real good job. Now, I will say this. A couple of times, the last couple of times, McMyler has gone back. Syracuse has put some pressure. You're going to really see some pressure now. Matter of fact, you had uh, number 43 just missed one of the punts, uh, Cliff Snell. Well, the one thing that he's being told right now, speaking of the Boston College punter, quickness. Catch the ball, kick it. Catch the ball, kick it. Snapper quasi Leverett wanted to get a good one. He does. They go after him, and he gets a good kick. End over end. Campbell from about the 12. No timeout remaining. Oh, that's a good play. That is a great play for Boston College. Eric Boatwright, a freshman quarterback. Outstanding. Number eight. Lenny Walls, number nine. It was number nine? Tough to see from up high, but sure is. Is Lenny, very Walls. Good. Lenny Walls. Thank you very much. Good play. You're talking about a tall order. Oh. 82 yards, 30 seconds, and no timeouts. No timeouts. Have fun. <laughs> Look how deep the safeties are for BC. And what, let's see what kind of arm Noon just got. He wants the play action. Nowhere to go. He's dangerous here. Across the field, nobody home. It was in the neighborhood of Campbell. 21 seconds to go. And once again, I don't understand the call. Why are we going play action? You know, let, let's look at the obvious. It's obviously a passing situation. Get your quarterback back in the, the pocket. Gun. How about in the gun? You know, they're running four routes, which take you across the middle of the field. You've got to work the sideline, and you've got to go eights and nine routes. You've got to go deep. Second down play, clock running. Noon steps up, in trouble, gets out, throws, sideline. What do we got? I heard a whistle. And they're going to say he's out of bounds. Boy, oh, boy. Not what they had in mind, the intended receiver, D. Brown. And these two plays have taken 19 seconds. Woo. Not textbook. This is not a clinic. No timeout remaining. Third down, 10 seconds to go in a seven-point ball game. They need a miracle. Noons. Game's going to end right here. Six. Get it out of bounds. The fullback gets out of bounds with three seconds to go. That was the best they could do to advance the ball. That prevent. Defense for Boston College getting the job done. I don't know if Frank Spaziano, the defensive coordinator from Boston College, did it with smoke and mirrors, but I tell you what, his defensive crew had a lot of opportunities to bend and break, and they simply didn't do that this afternoon. You know what? If you give anybody a game ball, give it to that man right there. Tremendous plan with a lot of his players, some of his top line players injured. Mm -hmm. Significant defenders done. And the one thing he told us about last year's game at the end when Chamberlain made the big play, <laughs> that he had a 42-inch vertical jump. We watched the uh, tape, and Frank, I think it was 42 centimeters. But the enthusiasm was oh, yeah. there. It was some real emotion. thing I like about Frank, boy, you know where he's coming from. He, he is passionate, as all these coaches are. Nobody oh. is more passionate than Paul Pasqualoni, believe me. You're talking about a long flight up to upstate New York. To which all I got to say to that is, oh boy. Fourth down inches, but more importantly, ball's at the 27 yard line. We're talking 73 yards. 
And they've got four deep and one deep, deep safety. It's going to do it right here. Clock's done. What kind of arms Noon's got? It's up in the air. It's hanging. They knock it down. Ball game over. Boston College on the board with their first conference win of 2000. They beat Syracuse 20 to 13. Tom O'Brien made one comment yesterday, yesterday afternoon. We want to see how we match up with Syracuse. You know what? It wasn't the prettiest game that you've coached in a long time, Tom, but you won the football game against a quality opponent. It's all about results. It's all about the W, and they pick it up. Boston College on the board in Big East standings at one and one.